Hello everyone. Hope you're all doing well. It is a lovely Wednesday of hump day this, I, I suppose. Um, and we're going to play some more great Ace Attorney. That's the plan anyway. I keep, uh, this keeps happening to me. Where I eat dinner after work. And then I just like watch a YouTube video or something for a bit. Watch some anime. And then like I start to get in the mood to like play a game, right? But it's like 640 at that point. 640, 650. And I'm like, oh, maybe I should play some Melty Blood. I'm like, hmm. It takes like a half an hour to get through a uh, an arcade match if you're winning and whatnot. And, you're, and I've got plans to stream. I really shouldn't start. So I don't. And I wait and I'm like, oh, I'll just I'll just play it later. Right. Like I'll just play the game after I finish streaming. And then I stream until I'm exhausted and tired and falling asleep. And then <laughs> don't end up playing the game. So that's that's what my evenings are like right now. I hope yours are more productive, I suppose. That's all good. I will say though that um, I don't know if I'll be streaming tomorrow because I'm trying to make plans with the friends to do something fun. But Friday night, Friday night will be the 14th and it will be the Splatfest. So probably gonna play Splatoon. Well, that's a close up. Hi. This is it then, Mr. Naohoto? Yes, it's time to put an end to this now. To the miserable curse that has been plaguing Mr. Natsume. To everything. In my own small way, I shall do everything I can to help you. I always appreciate your help, Mr. Sato. Suffering Sozaki selfishly sidelined! Ah. Good morning to you too, Mr. Natsume. Good morning. Good morning, locum student master Naruhodo Esquire. Listen to you two. Shut away happily as if the main player of today's trial isn't here. Why would you do that? Why? Oh dear. We didn't mean to cause offense, Mr. Natsume. I thought perhaps that because you had your eyes shut so tightly, you were meditating, finding inner calm. It seemed wrong to disturb you. I was waiting. What's the matter, Mr. Natsume? You seem different somehow today. Quite naturally, that's because I've attained spiritual enlightenment. The path of literature, you see, is a journey to discover... <coughs> is a journey to discover one's own death. Or such like. That's the sort of morning conversation I was hoping for. That's why I had my eyes shut. I... Miss the signs, I'm afraid. Somehow. You'll have to forgive me. And you mustn't talk with your path leading you to death, Mr. Natsume. That was just an example! Oh, yes. There it is. In our calm. You... you barely came to see me at all yesterday. I... I was sure you'd abandon me and return to our beautiful long-lost homeland. I've not even been in Great Britain a week yet. Yes. Well... Anyway... I intend to set everything straight in court today. I'm determined to uncover the truth. I've actually reached an important decision myself. Oh, what sort of decision? I shall fill you in after the trial. All right. It would seem Mr. Sholmes isn't coming today after all. It's a very clever message, I think. My dear fellows, you must win this battle on your own merits. It's a very clear message, I think. He's overslept again. The, the great detective. My arch nemesis. Long may he stay away, if you ask me. Defendant, and your legal representative. The trial's about to begin. Make your way into the courtroom immediately. I don't know what just happened there at the end of that word, but ignore that. Today, once again, we face the Reaper. And when the Reaper stands for the prosecution, the defendant's fate is sealed. But I don't believe in that legend any more than I believe in Sosaki-san's curse. 
The truth is hidden here somewhere, and I won't let it escape me. I have to keep believing in my client, and keep fighting to the very end. That's all. In the name of Her Majesty the Queen, I hereby declare this court to be in session. I call upon the counsels for the prosecution and defense to declare their willingness to proceed. The prosecution is ready. Yes, the defense is ready. Very good. And now I call upon the six ladies and gentlemen of the jury, chosen by lot to represent the will of the people in this trial. Are you ready to proceed? Absolutely. Justice will be done, you mark my words. I feel obliged to say, I feel especially ruthless on days when my heart is sitting just right. Oh, well, I wonder if you could adjust my hat for me. And please, be as ruthless as you like. Thieves deserve to die, if you ask me. Especially ghast thieves. I've no sympathy for the man at all. Look, I said it yesterday, I'll say it again now. I don't have time for this. My own problems. Do you think he managed to get enough money to pay his wife back? Oh, may the Lord show us all light here and lead his flock to a righteous verdict again today. Is that guy secretly a priest or something? Now, oh, Lord von Ziegs, what can you tell us? The prosecution's report, please, for the court. In relation to the theory expounded by the defense yesterday, Regarding the defendant's tea. So he does have the results. What are you toasting, Zeke's? <clears throat> Before the prosecution delivers the black news about the black tea belonging to the blackguard in the dock. Pray, allow me a moment to savor a liquid of a more sanguine hue. In fact, I'll defer to the good detective for the report. Here's to you, Inspector. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. As indicated by the defense, we found a bar of soap just outside the victim's window in the snow. And there was indeed a frozen reddish liquid and a little depression on the top of it. Yes, that's the tea. That's what Mr. Knott's brought with him that night. Well, we're into the yard analyzing. Yes, you're right. It was tea. And there wasn't a trace of strychnine or any other toxic substance in it. No poison at all. In other words, the tea that the defendant brought with him to the victim's room is innocent. It's in the clear. What a revelation! As I suspected. This makes it quite clear. The defendant, Mr. Sosaki Natsume, is blameless to my learned friend is jumping to conclusions again. A typical Nipponese reaction. What? Yes, it's true. No poison was found in the few drops of liquid recovered from the soap on the window ledge. But, what logic is that? Would you take a drop from the Thames and conclude that the water in the ocean isn't salty? Fuck you, Zeeks. They said... They said that a single drop would be enough. My word, the water in the ocean is extremely salty, Council. Exactly. Unfit for drinking, just as the victim's tea was on the night in question, as the court has already heard. Bitter was the precise words from the lips of Mr. Sham William Shamspear, whom the prosecution now calls back to the stand. Really? Very well. I'll uphold the prosecution's request. Mr. Shamspear? Yes, it sounds like we're going to have another confrontation with our theatrical friend. Bailiff, show Mr. Shamspear to the sand. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mr. William Shamspear, the victim of the despicable crime. Oh, heaven. Oh hell, 
Do you command me to remember? Forsooth, twas I, Shamspear, did have a belly full of the foul fluid given in my innocence. Yes, but as was revealed in yesterday's proceedings, the witness is not as innocent as we had first, perhaps first been led to believe. By using bars of soap such as this, he has been stealing gas from the supply company. Yes. One may smile and smile and be a villain. Forsooth, twas I, Shamspear, did have a room full of the sweet fuel given. That's right. Fellow jurors, don't forget. This man is a rotten thief. I haven't forgotten. Kept all about that ice coin's a tie secret, didn't you? Should have owned up sooner. Arrest him, I say. Arrest him at once. And let him feel the sting in my tail. In my tail? What? What tail? That's an umbrella, lady. Oh, indeed. By dint of vile and cowardly means have I plotted to further mine own ends, I confess. Thou wouldst not pardon my sins, of that I am sure. If you acknowledge your wrongdoing, what exactly are you doing here? Cowards die many times before their deaths. And for a coward such as I, death be well deserved. But, would it that a still greater crime passeth unpunished? For lo, the hairy-faced gentleman of Father East than Verona, sorry, Verona, did contrive to poison me. But there was no poison in the tea found in your room. The police have attested to that. What the defense would assert as an inconsistency will quickly be cleared up by the witness testimony. Is that not so, Mr. Shamsphere? Verily, my liege, I would most gladly speak. Very well. Let the witness testify to explain this inconsistency. Tell the court why it is that poison, why it is that poison apparently entered your body, though none was found in the tea. The Japanese man did come to my chamber with tea brewed in a pot. Twas in my cup alone that the wicked miscreant secretly poured his wicked poison. I was feigning distraction in our debate. Nay, I did a drop of his own drink past his lips. When he departed by and by, I did use the tea that remained in his cup to make my coins of ice. Thus, tis no surprise the poison be not found in the tea I did pour into the mold of soap. Okay, well that's bullshit. Because we know that Sozaki's son left no tea in his cup because there's no ring on it. The poison was slipped into the cup after the tea had been poured. The normal way for poison to be administered, in my experience. Quite. Otherwise it would be disastrous if the poisoner were to mix up the cups, for instance. <laughs> uh, you know what that makes me think of? It makes me think of a, uh, a certain battle of wits. Wits? Yes, a certain battle of wits. <laughs> they should have a show on TLC called that. For the, uh, the thousand pound people. Hmm. <laughs> but no poison bottle was found at the scene. Because, quite simply, the Nippony took the bottle back to his own room. The absence of vessel containing the poison only becomes problematic when considering suicide. <sighs> I knew that. By now it should be perfectly clear. A bar or two of cheap soap is wholly insufficient to wash the deep stains of guilt from the accuser's hands. <clears throat> Says, madams, tis true that I, Shamspear, be a common thief of gas. But... But listen here, ladies and gentlemen. Wherefore would I lie? Barely, I have no cause. I have not to lose. Well, I do declare. Thank you for your testimony, witness. Counsel, proceed with the cross-examination. Yes, my lord. Okay, so like... I could press him on everything. But like I, I feel like I already know exactly what the uh, thing to do is here. 
this is it. Yes, this is it. Because we know right here that there's no tea ring inside of Mr. Natsume's cup. Which means that there's no tea left long enough for it to just sit there. I suppose I'll, I'll press until I get there, I guess. Just in case it reveals any more clues, but... I understand that you already acquainted with Mr. Natsume, is that correct? I know thee not, old man. Fall to thy prayers! Do I know thee, or know thee not? Methinks this is all I can know, that thy destiny mingles with mine. You lost me at the first thee. Sound, sir. Thou must learn the English tongue afore thou turns thy hand to lawyering. I did, but I must have missed the archaic Elizabethan lecture. Verily, and in truth, twas a fine flavoured brew. Though a drop of poison did bob its sweetness, as the thorn doth bob the sweet rose. That, dear friends, be the simple truth. Listen to Mr. Shamspear. He seems in even better form than he was yesterday. Either that, or I'm in worse form. That fated evening after I did dine, at Grubb's Gruddery, a local alehouse of good rapport. Naught did pass my lips but the tainted black tea. I thought he only ate once a day in the morning. But behold, the poison was not in the tea at first. Hold it! Are you saying that you saw the moment when the poison was added to your tea? To have witnessed the act and then drank the tea? Thou dost describe the actions of a fool. Quite so, quite so. But no one likes going thirsty, do they? Sooner would I die quenched than parched. Would I have the choice? Actually, on the night in question, the water main was frozen, I believe, wasn't it? Were well, it not for the tea, in sooth, I would sooner have died frozen than quenched or parched. Right. No ice coins means no heating. The witness had more than one brush with death on the night in question, it would seem. Hmm. Remind the court, Mr. Shamspear, as to whether the accused drank any of the tea which he brought with him. With the greatest of pleasure, my liege. Okay, this is what I'm fucking. That this is this is what we're we're screwing over here. Because that is such shit. That is a crock of bad tea. Objection. Wrong. 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 Walter, what's know how wrong it is? It's this wrong. Two plus two. Yeah. Wrong. <laughs> you claim that Mr. Nottam didn't drink a drop of tea in question, but that's impossible. Or the night. Whatever he said, sorry. How? How? How trop logic? What is this, ye dark, ye clad fiend? Wait, was that what he said? Sorry. I feel like I'm suddenly not reading correctly. What is this, ye dark, ye clad fiend? Oh no, I read it right. That's just weird. Chop logic? It's, it's chop... Chop logic, a, a, a phrase? I don't think I've heard that one. And I've read some Shakespeare before. Argue in a tiresomely pedantic way to quibble. But it, it's two different words, according to... Uh, oh, okay. According to the Oxford Dictionary, it's two different words, chop logic. But Merriam Webster combines it together. Hmm. Though it means something very different. To argue skillfully using complex logic or clever reasoning. It's not quite the same thing as being pedantic, is it? I mean, they're kind of similar, but they're not really the same thing, I don't think. 
The two teacups from the scene, one used by the victim and the other by the defendant, have a clear difference between them. One that represents incontrovertible proof. Incontrovertible? What difference? Look at the inside of the cups. Just here, there's a clearly visible ring. Yes, a tea ring. Commonplace enough. Indeed. Such stains occur all too readily when one leaves tea in the cup for a while. And yet, Mr. Natsume's cup has no such ring. Good lord, you're right. It's completely clean. And pity, sir, what makest thou of it? Exactly what Mr. Natsume told the court yesterday. The Japanese saying he quoted, Drink tea while it's hot. That's right. Yes. The jittery Mr. Natsume was true to his usual self that night and drank his tea in no time. Yeah. If, as you claim in your testimony, he didn't touch a drop of his tea, a ring would have developed on the inside of his cup as well after the several hours the tea was left standing. But, um... In short, Mr. Shamsphere, you clearly lied to the court. Yeah. The... To a nunnery. Why does he point to Zeke's? As a rule, I fill my hallowed chalice up to seven times during any one trial. You might want to keep that information to yourself. Yet on occasion, tedium distracts me and I pour more times than I intended until the bottle is dry. You're... Drinking habits are fascinating, but irrelevant. On the contrary, they illustrate the fickleness of human memory. To William Shamsbeer. Yes, my liege. Though you previously stated that you made the coins of ice from the leftover tea in the accused's cup, could it be that you were perhaps mistaken? Ah. Could it be? That yes, perhaps there was some tea remaining in the small teapot left at the scene. A fact that had vanished from your memory until now? Wow. Van Zeeks, you have no care at all for the truth, do you? Faith, my liege, thou art a magician. For fairly, tis as though thou hast seen with thine own eyes that night. One moment, please. Crime scene photograph. Uh, okay, there is a there is a pot of water here, I guess. Would they have used that though? I remember the the bottle was in his room, right? Actually, wait, is there? No, it's just the. Okay, for a second I thought it had a hole in it or something. Uh. What? Forsooth, I was mistook. I did plan to use tea from the Japanese fellow's cup, but lo, when I looked, twas empty. And thus did I use the dregs that festered in the teapot, as my liege did suggest. <laughs> and you've just suddenly remembered now that you made a mistake before. Are we supposed to believe that? Objection. People's memory are imperfect, my learned friend, which is why we rely on evidence instead. But in any case, it makes no difference. The victim's most recent testimony tells us two things of note. Firstly, that the poison was put into the victim's teacup only. And secondly, that this sport cup was not the source of the insipid ice coins that have bewitched this court. Mm. The prosecution makes a fine summary of bullshit. Furthermore, that testimony remains valid and in full support of the established facts. In other words... The inconsistency claimed by the defense simply does not exist. No. What does this mean, then? I do declare, it means there's no issue with the ghast thief's testimony. Apart from the bit about thieving gas, obviously. 
My lords, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I do solemnly swear, after I did dine at Grub's Grubbery Air House that night, naught did pass my lips but the black tea given me by the Japanese, whose back be stooped as low as death. And on what did you dine, sir? Why, I did partake of my favorites. A broth, as would be called soup, and a leaf, as would be called salad. As in celebrious a menu as the establishment where it was served. But you cults will give us some faults to make us men. Willingly would I suffer what punishment to seem fit to serve a wicked thief of gas. But I pray you wise and noble fellows ne'er forget the simple truth. That be one thing, and this be another. Dear as all, your humble servant Shamaspear doth entreat you. Punish the Japanese fellow for his sins. My lord. Oh, sorry, no, that's someone else saying, right? My lord. If I may speak, my lord. Y yes, Mr. Foreman. I believe we may have been duped by that rotten defense lawyer. By me? I do declare you may be right. You all know the wife there was making coins of ice to keep himself warm. But this loyal lad says he's if he's stealing gas, he deserves a dose of poison, eh? He doesn't lead us up the garden path, that's what he's been doing. I, I really never said anything like that. But what we just heard from the victim there has opened our eyes again. We've reached a decision this time, we won't be swayed from it. The court acknowledges the position of the jury, Foreman. It will duly hear the jury's findings. What? No, you, you can't yet. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you will state your decisions Guilty. now. Guilty. 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 Mm-hmm. I hereby declare the jury to be in one accord. Oh, happy day! Man, look at look at him go. He's got he's got them crazy hip sways. <laughs> Sorry, I got a one minute. <laughs> okay. Sorry. I I swear I've taken more like quick little videos from uh like this court case so far than any other Lisa or anything. How's this happening? My lord, the defense asserts its right to carry out a summation examination. Very well. The court upholds the defense's right. Typical. My learned friend is unable to accept the obvious truth. This trial will therefore enter its second summation examination immediately. Jurors, the court calls upon each of you to state the grounds upon which you find the defendant guilty of the crime of which he is charged. Right. A man of logic, me. And having considered all the evidence, the defendant must logically be guilty. I do agree that the gas is far too expensive. I can quite understand the matter the man would want to avoid pain. The stuff explodes and it can poison you. Absolute lethal gases. Gas doesn't come for free. It costs a fortune to deliver it around the city and maintain the pipes. Be told wife, the tea my wife serves up for me is a little sketchy at times. If nothing else passes the victim's lip that night, there's no other explanation, is there? But why did he have soap on his face when we first saw him? That's my question. Mm, I do feel that perhaps personal opinion about gas and its supply has influenced decisions somewhat. But never mind. No, no, you really should mind. The truth is, our counter-argument wasn't as unsellable as we had hoped. Mrs. Shams here was poisoned. There can be no doubt about that. Then how are we supposed to turn this around? I think we need to establish the method by which Mr. Shams was actually poisoned. Our only hope is to demonstrate that to the court incontrovertibly. But, but that's surely impossible at this stage. If we don't manage, though, Mr. Monsmay will be found guilty. 
No delays, Council. Proceed with the summation examination. That smug little fuck right there. All right, here we go. Do 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 do. All right. I suppose we'll save them. Hope I didn't jump the gun like not pressing all the other statements. Hold it. All the evidence, you say? That's right. There's no room for doubt. It's all pointing at that Japanese man with the big mustache. Says the Englishman with the bigger mustache. Which means we need to show the man some new evidence to make him change his mind. Only we have that kind of evidence. Don't worry. The summation is barely started, really. Perhaps there'll be a shift in the situation that shows us an, ex an existing piece of evidence in a new light. I don't know why I can't speak today, and I keep fumbling over my words, and my pointer finger just kind of hurt randomly out of nowhere. <laughs> it's weird. Like, right on the nail. Odd. Anyway. Let's hope so. To start with, though, I need to find some way out of this deadlock. I do agree that the gas is far too expensive. I can quite understand why the man would want to avoid pain. This isn't the time or the place to be discussing the price of gas, madame. But really, think of the injustice. Air is, air is a gas, and air is free. Why should adamant gas, gas cost money? It, it makes my blood boil. I can feel myself becoming more ruthless than ever. This isn't the time or the place to be ruthless either. If I might interject here. Mm, yes, madame. It seems my fellow juror takes issue with the price of our company's charges for gas. But it's precisely because of thieves like this man that the cost goes up. Oh, what a beastly man. That uncut moustache, those hunched shoulders, poisoning tea and stealing gas, utterly unforgivable. No, 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 Mr. Nortsmay isn't the one who's been stealing gas. I'll thank you not to go adding on more crimes. Mr. Nortsmay hasn't been poisoning tea either. Huh, anyway, quite made up my mind. It is made up as the price of the gas. I have a feeling, I wonder if we're just going to pit everyone against the um, the wife head lady of the uh, gas company. Because they all seem like they'd be mad at her. Could we please not, could we please talk about the poison rather than the gas, do you think, sir? Well, if you like. I mean, to be honest, I take poison over gas every time. You take poison? What I mean is, poison can only poison you. Doesn't explode, does it? Goodness me, what are you talking about? Set him straight, please, lawyer man. Well, it's certainly true that poison isn't prone to exploding. But I think you'll find poison also can't light or heat up a room. Oh, oh. You're, you're right. I don't consider that at all. You're welcome, jury number four. Young lawyer man. Um, yes. You have a good head on your shoulders. We could use someone like you as our company's legal representation. Dude, do that! Get a, get a more stable job that doesn't threaten your well-being every day. Also, those bedroom eyes. Well, I wasn't expecting to pick up more business in the middle of a trial, that's for sure. Anyway, the point is I haven't had the best experience with gas companies in the past. Could the poison have somehow been delivered through the pipes? Can we please refrain from all this talk of gas? There's an all-out attack underway here, in case you hadn't noticed. That's my company's gas. And I'm supposed to sit here and take it, am I? I don't think so. She's really buzzing now. All I've heard about are wonderful fuels, explosions, and poisonings. What about electricity, hmm? What about getting electrocuted? What about that? A little explosion here and there is nothing in comparison. A any explosion could hardly be described as nothing, madame. Nevertheless, the theft of your gas is deplorable. Deplorable. My point exactly. But the gas thieves aren't even the worst of our enemies. They are far more devious reprobates to contend with on a daily basis, you know. More devious. Who, madame? 
other gas companies, of course. Other gas companies? Not quite what I was expecting. We generate gas and we deliver it to our customers fair and square. Indeed. Nobody is questioning that, madame. Altamont is an exemplary gas company. But there are other unscrupulous gas companies here in London that don't even have any gas at all. What? But if they don't have any gas, how do they go about selling it to people? You wouldn't think it possible, would you? But they steal our gas, you see, and sell that. They steal your gas? How on earth is such a thing possible? Gas companies like ours deliver gas to people's home via a network of pipes. But these devious reprobates secretly disconnect our pipes and divert our gas into their own rotten pipes. Then they make a contract with the household supplied by those pipes and take money for the precious gas that's rightfully ours, without us even knowing. They're diverting gas into their own pipes illegally. What a brazen form of theft. When we visit customers' houses to collect the money from their meters, we always have to check whether or not one of these devious companies have been up to its tricks. Oh. Should I pursue or should I finish hearing what she has to say? This was a pursue first. Do you have something to say about that, chair number three? Golly, you mean me? I'm, I'm terribly sorry. I was just thinking to myself. I really did catch him off guard there. Thinking about the, what the lady next to you was saying, correct? No. Yes. I just got a little wild about it recently, you see. Go on. An ultimate gas worker visited my house the other day to investigate the pipework. We need to ask for your cooperation while we carry out a secret check of your property, sir, the fellow said. So I let him in. And you know what he did? Huh. Um, I'm afraid I have no idea. Please tell us. He proceeded to take one of my lights off the wall. Then he grabbed the exposed mouth of the pipe and started blowing into it. What do you think you're doing, young man? You're giving away complete secrets there. Now oh, please, everybody knows. It was very nearly the death of me, I can tell you. Wh what do you mean? <sighs> I'll explain, if you don't mind. As I said before, these unscrupulous other gas companies connect their customers to our pipe network. Yes, but how does blowing into the pipes come into it? Obviously, there's gas in the pipes, and it's at a fairly low pressure. By blowing air through the pipe, you can make the pressure drop temporarily. And if you do that, any lights connected to the same pipe will flicker for a moment. Ah, oh, I see. In other words, if upon blowing into the pipe, the lights of an adjacent property that has no contract with your company flicker, you can know that these devious scoundrels have been meddling with the pipes. Exactly, my lord. That's it in a nutshell. It's the reason why we have teams of workers going around neighborhoods to investigate which lights flicker. The trouble is, the particular worker in my house didn't know the strength of his own breath. He blew down the pipe with all his might. And guess what might happen? What happened, can't you? Well, if he blew hard, then... Wait, you mean... That's right. The lights didn't just flicker. They went out. Along with the stove. Gas started pouring into the house. What a disaster. The gas supply must have been interrupted briefly because the man blew too hard. So the flames went out. I'm afraid I yelled at the fellow. Are you trying to kill us all? I said. So, by disconnecting a lamp and blowing into the exposed gas pipe, it's possible to extinguish lamps and stoves connected to the same network of pipes. And then, when the gas starts flowing again, it just silently sleeps into the room. Yeah, is that why Natsume keeps thinking that someone's trying to kill him? Because that would make sense, right? Maybe Shamsbury is trying to kill him. Mr. Narahodo, I think perhaps... Yes. This is almost certainly the clue that we've been hoping for. Jair number three. The defense requests that you amend your statement to include that information. Oh. Well, if you like. I don't mind. Well, I do. That's our company's secret method of identifying the rogues that try to diddle us. Like I said, madame, it's widely known already. Very well. Turn number three. We'll amend your statement accordingly. Yes, my lord. Although, I'm not really sure what the point of all this is.
Okay, um, should I finish pressing her? Hold it. Okay, hold on, I'm gonna click through until the part where uh, the pursuit happens and then just go through and continue past it. there. Very difficult silence when you can't see, you know. Very... Oh wait, this is new. Sorry, I remember that. I guess you just don't get the pursue option again. Thank you, that will do. Clearly, this is a very involved subject, but I feel we have digressed rather too much already. I concur. Though if my learned friend wishes to become an expert in gas, I believe the subject will suit him well. To your new career in nothingness. <laughs> Thank you so much. You will turn your attention to the next Jiro's assertion, please, Consul. Hold it! You... you mean it's poisoned? That's right. Happened a tidy few times now. This is most troubling indeed. It's always days like this one when I don't get any wages. I get in a tea time, see? And I see her doing it. My wife. She gets that devilish look on her face. She slips some white powder into my cup. And, and you drink it anyway. I was brought up proper, I was. If someone gives you a cup, you drink it. And what happened to you? What did it taste like? It was quite awful, believe you me. Salty as hell. She put salt in here. Okay. Then I think perhaps what your wife put in your tea was salt. No. So she doesn't even care enough to poison me properly, eh? Unbelievable. Let's move on, please. Yes. Yes. Does that mean that if the victim could be shown to have ingested something else, you'd change your leaning? Hey, sorry. What's that now? Oh, um, I was just saying, if the victim did actually eat or drink something else on the night, what's the matter with you? Sorry? I said, if nothing else passed the victim's lip that night, there's no other explanation, is there? Have you been listening to me at all? Uh, I feel there's an English expression but a port in a kettle that's appropriate here. Compared to the other Joes who don't even appear to have anything to say about the case at all, it would seem that this elderly gentleman has been listening to the proceedings far more intently. I, I suppose the trouble is he has selective hearing. Exactly. But still, this Joe may well be the key to the breakthrough that we so desperately need. Ugh. This is hopeless. There's no way for me to appeal to these people. I do think that the only way we shall overcome this difficult situation is by exposing the way Mr. Shamsu was really poisoned. We have to prove that it happened some other way, and not via Mr. Natsume's tea. Could it have been gas poisoning? Yes, I, I know. The trouble is, I have absolutely no idea how it did happen. Mr. Naruhodo, I wonder if perhaps there's something you might have forgotten. Oh? Like what? It's important to watch everyone involved and pursue people if they react to something someone else says. If you'd like me to remind you exactly what I mean, I'd be more than happy to, of course. Once again, Sozaki san's fate is entirely in my hands here. I probably owe it to my client to hear any advice from my assistant may be a bit awful. So perhaps I ought to let Susada remind me. Then again. No need. Actually, I don't think there's any need. It's vital that we start trying to change these Joe's minds as soon as possible. Of course, I'm sure you're right. But if you decide you would like your memory refreshed, you need only ask Mr. Naruto. Okay. Uh. 
Okay, man of logic. Okay, so blow too hard into a gas pipe. Extinguish everything in the. Cost of fortune. T is sketchy. If nothing else passed the victims of that, there's another explanation. Is there? Uh, so, all the evidence, he must be guilty. Could we pit these two against each other? Because it's logic and guy who's been listening to everything versus that? Cost of fortune to run a signal to the pipes. I'm gonna I'm gonna try it, I guess. Objection. Those two statements are fundamentally at odds with one another. Um no. Uh, yeah, no. Any pettifoggery. Alright, fine. There won't there won't be any pettifoggery. <sighs> the other question, of course, is was there only one pursuit option? You know? Cause that's that's another thing. Um Let's say, whoa, whoa. Stop it. Why doesn't it actually go backwards? Um, anyway, juror number six against. Uh, actually, which one would it be? Um, so I'm thinking about how Susato, when we pursued and everything, she said that, like, this was the clue we were looking for. And then this dude is the, the he said that he's a key, so maybe we need to, pers like, put these two against each other? I mean, the gas passes his lips, right? Like this lady being expensive, <laughs> you could pit her against this to make them argue with each other, I suppose. But it doesn't really do anything for the case, right? A sketchy T man doesn't have any corresponding thing. I think this makes the most sense, probably. Objection. Those two statements clearly contradict each other. Good gracious! To whose statements do you refer, counsel? Juror number six. Did you hear what juror number three just said? Eh, yeah, well, yes, of course, I, I heard him mumbling about something or other. There is another explanation here, I believe. Something besides Mr. Notsme's tea did, in a manner of speaking, pass the victim's lips on the night in question. What? What explanation? I wonder, did the police check the mouth of the gas pipe feeding the wall light at the scene? To see if there were any traces of poison there? I was curious to see what your floundering would result in this time, but the mouth of a gas pipe. Scotland Yard have some. Scotland Yard have enough. Oh yeah, I guess that is it. Okay, sorry. Scotland Yard. No, no, it, that should be has. Scotland Yard has enough to do without exploring such irrelevance. What a piece of work is a man. What are you trying to say, Mister Shamsphere? What speakest thou? Prithee, is it not strange and strange? That is what I say to thee, sir. I thought I'd been quite clear, but let me put it another way. The strychnine could have been on the mouth of the gas pipe that feeds the wall lamp in your room. And that is how the poison came to enter your body. Good, good lord. Why would it be there? Well, they tell you see them gas pipes. Is that what he's saying? 
Or as the gentleman suggesting that the poor man was so desperately hungry, he tried to fill his belly with gas. Perhaps no actress would perform a kiss scene with him, hmm? For shame, madame. Speaking thy fancy. I assure you, I'm not such a buffoon that I have to kiss pipes. This is no summation examination. This is a farce. The prosecution will not stand for any more of my learned Nipponese friend's conjecture. To begin with, the lamp in the victim's room is high on a wall. In order to have placed his lips to the pipes that feeds it, he would have to be a contortionist. These are empty assertions. And there's no possible proof that the man did as you say. It's true. I have no proof that Mr. Shamsia put his lips to the pipe. However, I can say with some certainty that on multiple occasions, Mr. Shamsia has been doing something in front of that lamp on his wall. And I have evidence to prove it. Alright. Got all attention, lad. Let's see how you can be so sure of yourself. So would I. Let's see this evidence then. Now that I've got the jury's ear, I need to make this opportunity count. This is the proof that time and time again, Mr. Shamsir stood in front of the, his gas lamp. Is the lamp uh, the, the thing with the, um, this, the prints? Oh yeah, yeah, that is a lamp. So he's just been trying to murder Sosaki the entire time? Take that! Via gas? What the? These are, wait, what are they called? Yes, skin prints. They were found at the scene. Skin prints, Council. Never heard of such things. The Justice Ministry is currently assessing whether or not to permit fingerprints as evidence in court, however. My lord, this is an exciting new forensic technique developed by the great detective, Mr. Herlock Sholmes. It reveals all the places that Mr. Sholmes had touched in his room. I've never seen anything like it. And that's black magic, isn't it? Hmm. Well, if anyone could invent something like this, it's that great Sholmes fellow, that's for sure. I agree. This month's edition of Engineering Thumbs was quite fascinating. We found skin prints in many places that you would expect. On the table, on the costumes. However, Mr. Shamsir also appears to have been touching some very unexpected places in his room. For example, here. Around the hanging picture there. Oh, sorry, this is the judge. Around the hanging picture there. Indeed, multiple handprints appear to be visible. Well, I wonder, could he have been appreciating the artwork, perhaps? At first, my colleagues and I thought the same. However, imagine standing with your hands where those prints are, and you would find yourself directly in front of... In front of... Ah! I don't believe it. The gas lamp. Though the reason why isn't immediately obvious, it's clear that Mr. Shamsphere has regularly been standing with his hands to the wall in front of that lamp. Right. What have you been up to, you nut? I'd asked the court to record juror number four's earlier statement. Me? What did I say? You said that blowing into a gas pipe would make the lights in the entire building flicker. And now, if you'll record juror number three's statement... What? Well, me now? When the gas worker who visited his, visited his home blew with too much force into the pipe, it caused all the lights in the gas stove to go out, and gas to start leaking into the rooms. Obviously, that incident was an accident. However, the simple fact is... If Mr. Shamsphere were to have blown hard into the gas pipe here in his room, he could have extinguished every other light and gas stove in the building at will. Crikey! Oh! Are you suggesting that the man purposefully caused the gas to- Objection! Whilst I acknowledge that the prosecution is required to remain silent during a summation examination, I must toast my learned friend's utter disregard for the letter of the law. What is the meaning of this Lord Von Zeeks? This curious photograph, or whatever it is, presented by the defense. The so-called skin prints. Clearly, this cannot be accepted as any form of usable evidence in this case. But, but it is an exciting new forensic technique, developed by a great detective. It's nothing. 
a mere toy developed by an amateur sleuth with too much time on his hands. Mm. Mm. Certainly, even research of this nature by the esteemed Mr. Sholmes cannot be recognized by the court as formal evidence. But... Please, my lord, if I may, Mr. Sato, it was not the defense's intention to submit the skin print as formal evidence. We merely wish to present the results of the great detective's investigation of the scene as a tool by which to explain a possibility to the ladies and gentlemen of the jury. And if the trial were to come to an end now, we should never learn the truth behind these mysterious handprints that everyone has now seen. I don't believe we can allow that to happen, and I'm sure the jurors would agree. You're right. Whether those strange handprints are a significant clue or not, it's down to us to decide. Jump number three. Oh yes, I do declare the great detective's investigation results sound absolutely fascinating. And I want to hear what that shady actor fella has to say about those shady handprints. What's the matter with you two? That was foolhardy. Well, I did say it, didn't I? I don't like to break a promise. No, wait! You heard his lordship. It's not fair dinkum evidence. Dinkum. <laughs> Britain. Oh, well done, Mr. Nahodo. If just one more juror changes his or her mind, Mr. Knott's may try hard to continue. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Otto. But I couldn't have done it without you. Oh. No, it was you who identified the clue, after all. This is very much your success. Oh, look at them. Sweating now. Why? Mr. Shamsphere, you seem to be losing your composure. Just one more try, Mr. Naruhodo. You can do it. Very well. Continue, Council. Okay. Well, you haven't really considered all the evidence now, have you? Right? Right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna press all the juries again. Oh, the other ones who have to, haven't changed their mind at least. All the evidence, you say? That's right. And there's no room for doubt. It's all pointing at that Japanese arm with the big mustache. Says the English one. Oh, we, we've read that already. But the defense just demonstrated another possible explanation of the events on the night in question. This is new though. What do you make of that? What? Your so-called skin prints. It's an exciting new forensic investigation technique developed by the great detective himself. The numerous handprints on the wall are clearly out of the ordinary. And if Mr. Shamaspear had indeed put his mouth to the gas pipe on the night in question, it can't be denied that there's a possibility that's where the poison was. Oh, yes. I'll deny that's playing on my mind. But as the prosecution rightly says, we should pay no heed to unacceptable forms of evidence. Besides... Yes. Even if the fellow has been up to some mischief with the gas pipe dozens of times before, doesn't mean he got up to the same shenanigans on the night in question, does it? No. Oh. If you can't make your case better than that, Fred, I can't change my stance. Oh, but he's open to changing it, though. Hmm. You do make a very valid point, sir. What? Hmm. That's true. Perhaps I was a little hasty. No, 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 wait. Look, you got your chance here, haven't you? So it's time to prove your theory. If you and your Japanese cohorts can get us. Just leave our nationality out of this, please. Mr. Narahodo, if we can't substantiate our position, I'm afraid the jurors that changed their minds before may very well change them back. What can I do? Is there any more proof that I can give here? Dun, 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 dun. I'm so confused. Sorry. Okay, anyway, we're good. I had a random uh, notification go off. Okay. Is there any more proof that I can give? Can I show that Mr. Shamsphere really did blow down the gas pipe on the night in question? Um. Yes. Yes? Yes? I mean, can I call in Mr. Gerda to testify about the, um, the lights? 
Also, Sosaka, Sosaki's curse is basically this guy, right? Blowing out the pipes and everything. Which, did he say? I'm gonna try this. No, in truth, I don't have evidence to support my theory. However, there is witness testimony that substantiates it. What's that? Testimony? This is incredible. Whose testimony? Yes, it's all connected. Everything is linked. The person whose testimony revealed details with the gas and the gear to his residence that night. Namely... Okay, it's one of the two. Um... Gerdeb isn't here, so we'd have to, like, interrupt the trial. And I imagine we're not going to do that since we're in the third part. So I'm going to go for Sosaki first. Because his whole curse business and everything like that, that's, that's that, so. Obviously, I'm talking about the defendant. Mr. Sosaki Natsume himself. The defendant? At the very beginning of the proceedings here in court yesterday, Mr. Natsume said the following. My lodgings. There's been a whole series of strange happenings in my lodgings. You know that fateful night had happened. When I returned from Mr. Shamsu's room, I lit my gas stove and climbed into bed. But before long, the stove went out, and somebody tried to kill me. On the night in question, the gas in the defendant's room went out. So I asked the court, was that a mere coincidence or not? Good golly. So... So that Chamsuer fellow blew air into the gas pipe to make the man's stuff go out on purpose. Now hold your horses there. Why, what would he do that for? Mr. Foreman. What, what the? What is it, man? We cannot allow judgment to be passed whilst this doubt remains. It's true that I don't have conclusive evidence yet. However, you must surely agree there's more to this case than meets the eye. Ugh. Fair enough. Like I said at the outset, I'm a man of logic, first and foremost. That's four jurors leaning towards not guilty, my lord. We've overturned the decision. Therefore, the defense calls for the trial to continue. As the defense has rightfully indicated, the summation examinations conclude with the majority of jurors altering the decisions. Two jury members now call guilty, four now call not guilty. Therefore, the jury's opinion is conflicted and, in accordance with the law of this land, I hereby order the continuation of this trial. Heck yeah. Mr. William Shamspear. My lord. How, how can thy humble Shamsphere serve thee? What say you in response to the various revelations made during the summation examination? So God mend me, I do solemnly swear. I recall aught of either the lamp or the pipe. But your handprints have made a tidy mess all over the wall there. How to explain that, eh? I am done with this. The dignity of this great courtroom has been sullied enough already. Juror number five. Mate? As I went to some pains to point out already, a print from the self-professed detective's toy has no place in a British court of law. Mm. As such, whether or not this man did indeed stand before the gas lamp with his hands against the wall remains at this time unestablished conjecture. You would all do well to remember that. Mm. Objection! But the prosecution must concede that it would be extremely simple to verify. Just order the mouth of the gas pipe feeding that lamp in Mr. Rape in Mr. Shamsu's room to be examined. If there are traces of poison there... Objection. What appears to be extremely simple is my Nipponese friend's mind. You recall that in order to check for the presence of poison in the tea, some remnants of tea were required. Yes. Therefore, it shouldn't be beyond your wit to imagine that even if poison would have been spread on the pipe, it would have completely evaporated by now, making any analysis impossible. Ugh. I don't think of that. 
In any case, Counsel, I fail to see what could possibly have motivated the man to do as you seem describe. Why on earth would this fellow have wanted to blow air into the gas pipework where he lived? There's only one possibility that I can think of, and that is to use the leaking gas to commit murder. Order! Order! Counsel, precisely whose life do you propose this man was plotting to end? The answer couldn't be simple. Simpler. Now we've unraveled the mystery this far. Mrs. Shamsfield wanted to end the life of... Natsuki, obviously. It's, it's why he's going so hard on trying to frame him, right? If a gas lamp were to go out, it would be noticed immediately, of course. But a gas stove, on the other hand, could be silently extinguished by the killer without anyone noticing. I live around those parts myself, so I know what it's like. I can tell you, trying to sleep without the stove lid is pretty much suicide. You'd freeze to death in no time. Mr. Gerdeb, the landlord, has a large fireplace in this part of the residence on the top floor. In other words, it wasn't the landlord, but a fellow lodger whose life Mr. Shamsu was trying to end. Outrageous! I'm talking, of course, about the defendant. Mr. Natsume isn't the villain in this case. He's the victim this man was trying to murder. Good gracious! Objection! The accused is actually the aggrieved. Interesting. However, the fundamental facts of the case remain unchanged. Namely, that the accused is the aggressor here. What? How can you still claim that? Let us indulge our fancies for a moment and assume that there was indeed poison on the mouth of the gas pipe. The question that then arises is who put it there? Who did put it there? The only logical conclusion is that the person responsible was aware of this man's trickery with the gas supply and his intent to kill. Yes, that would indeed seem logical. If the assailant were unaware, how would he or she have been known to lace the end of the gas pipe with poison? So now we must ask, how could anyone have known of Mr. Shamsfield's murderous designs? Huh, you mean to suggest? Naturally, the sole purpose, sorry, the sole possible answer to that question could be more obvious. Only the man whose life was being threatened could possibly have known. What? In other words, the person who put the pipe, who put the poison on the gas pipe in what was clear a clear retaliatory attack can only have been the accused, Mr. Soseki Natsume. Oh, he actually said his name for once. Ah. Whatever Mr. William Shamespear may or may not have contrived to do, he was nevertheless the victim of a potentially lethal poison attack. And the only person who could possibly have perpetrated that attack is the accused, Mr. Natsume. The defense counsel's theorizing has failed to avert suspicion from the accused. Far from it. In fact, now that a clear motive for the poisoning has been successfully established, that suspicion is greater than ever. Would you not agree, my Nippides friend? Uh, do, 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 do. Um, I'm trying to think who else is associated with Shamsphere. I mean, we haven't seen that many people doing stuff with him. He was at the hospital, though. Does... Does, um, Olive... That's her name, right, Olive? Does the round lady know about the ice trick? How did he manage to turn that around on me so rapidly? Mr. Naruhodo, you must respond. Otherwise, the members of the jury may very well change their leanings against us again. And this may be our last chance to gain the advantage. What advantage? Well, it would seem that somebody put poison on the gas pipe in Mr. Shamsu's room. So we must name that person now and absolve Mr. Notsme of guilt. You mean... 
name the true culprit. I know it might sound impossible, but if we fail to do that, I have no doubt that Mr. Knox May's fate will be sealed once and for all. As it happens, one possible culprit does come to mind, really. The evidence, the poison, it's all pointing to a particular person now. Wait a minute, hold on, hold on, wait, 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 wait a minute, one second. We're not gonna... Is the suicide that we're... Re remember, um... Where is it? Uh, oh, we don't have anything, do we? Every piece of envelope. Oh. Are we gonna accuse her? That, like, almost makes sense, though. Because, um, when we visited her, she was about to murder herself, right? With poison? So she has access to poison. Does she have a motive, though? I know she knows Shamspear. I would assume that they must have gone to the same art college or whatever. Um... But I don't know why... Passed away a month ago as a result of gas poisoning. Oh! There's motive. Because Duncan Ross was in the... He was in the same room as Soseki. Right? And... If... If Shamosphere has been blowing into the pipes and was the one who caused the death of him, then she has a motive to kill him. Did she go and visit him, though? Like, how did she... The prosecution calls for the jury to consider their leanings again. I trust you'll make the correct choice this time, Mr. Foreman. For what? Oh, don't you worry. We know exactly what... There is one other person who I believe could have been involved in all of this. The true culprit of this crime. The, the true culprit? A term found only in second-rate novels featuring third-rate great detectives, my Nipponese friend. But why not? This farce has gone on for so long already, I see no reason to cut it short before its disappointing climax. That's what his wife says to him in bed. Thank you. Tell us, my learned Nipponese friend, what is your latest theory? Actually, do you think Van Zeeks is married? He strikes me as the kind of like British dude that has like, it's either gonna be like the most stern and like ferocious wife, like very shrewd, very intense, like just as intense as he is, or like the sweetest thing. <laughs> Who is the so-called true culprit in this crime? I'm gonna go for it. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, it's Herlock. No. <laughs> I'm gonna go with Olive. The name of the person responsible for the poison that afflicted Mr. Shamster is, I believe, Miss Olive Green. Miss Olive Green. Miss Olive Green. I do feel as though I've heard that name in the recent past, Council, but I don't recall where. Miss Olive Green. The woman from six days ago. The victim in the recent case of stabbing on Briar Road. An incident for which Mr. Notsme was arrested, I hasten to add. Ooh, of course. Yes, Miss Green. She was left comatose for some three days, I believe. But I hear she regained consciousness two days ago. And I hardly need remind the court that Mr. Shamsa's poisoning took place three days ago. Oh, maybe I'm wrong then. Given that the woman was lying comatose in a hospital bed at the time, she appears to have a rather fine alibi. True. On the night that the incident occurred, Miss Green was in hospital, unconscious. So on the face of it, it would seem that she couldn't possibly be responsible, but still. 
My colleagues and I visited Miss Green in hospital yesterday. We found her to be in possession of a bottle of poison. Good gracious, she had poison. And there's another fact that links Miss Green to this case as well. The defense requests that she be brought to the witness stand in order to explain the details to the court. Hmm. Tell me, Mr. Shamsphere. My, my lord, pray, what be thy bidding? Are you acquainted with Miss Green? Uh, no, no, never heard of her. Judging by the look on Mr. Shamsphere's face, I think perhaps he generally doesn't know her. At least not by name. As the voice of Her Majesty's prosecution here, I adhere to my word. We will see my learned Nipponese friends fast through to its conclusion. I... I appreciate that. The prosecution requests a short recess, my lord, in order to subpoena the witness and bring her here. Sometimes I say words real funny. Yes, Miss Olive Green. Indeed, my lord. One hour should be sufficient. Very well. I grant the request. Excellent. I hope. The defense has made a most extraordinary accusation, I must say. But at the present time, I feel the prosecution's argument remains largely uncontested. Accordingly, I'm afraid the defendant and his culpability remain the sole subject of this court's attention. Thank you, counsels. We reconvene in one hour. Court is adjourned. To be continued. But we're only an hour into the stream, so we can keep going. Every time I play this game, I like constantly wonder if like interesting court TV, like if that's a thing, you know, or if it's really just extremely dry. <laughs> Though interestingly enough. Huh. CourtTV.com. Most bingeable cases from the trial archives. What? Sorry, there's... There's an actually... There you go, sorry. Uh, let me just narrow it a bit. Thanks, my... Court TV, huh? Johnny Depp first ever heard. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember when that was something. Taught, taught mom murder trial. Huh. Killed her daughter to rid herself of parental responsibilities. Despite the both, the despite the both brothers. So we live some for those been renewed algorithm that they didn't get fair trials. Jody Arias Arias murdered her ex boyfriend. Stab wound, slit throat, and gunshot wound to the head. Jeez, man. Self defense. That doesn't sound like self defense. Huh. She testified for eighteen days. Huh. Nanny murder trial. Murder of nine month old Matthew Epping, really? Wow. The trial brought international attention to the term shaken baby syndrome. I remember as a kid, the shaken baby syndrome thing was like, it was a thing. Like, that was, um, the, like, we would make like jokes about it because we were shitty little kids, obviously. But like, don't shake the baby from South Park was was that, I guess. Huh. I don't know. See, on the one hand, I this stuff is interesting, right? Like how the court systems work, what happens, the horrible things that people get up to. On the other hand, I feel kind of the same way as I do for like that stuff as I do about like the TLC super fat people shows where it's like, I really wish that it just didn't get the time of day that it does. I like to make a spectacle of people's lives. It just doesn't, it just doesn't seem right to me. 
At least the fat people get paid, I suppose, for it. Joyful, jubilant jumping jocks! Oh, Mr. Natsume, I'm so pleased for you. Locum student Mr. Narahoda Esquire, and non locum judo judicial assistant Miss Mikotobo Esquire. No, finally, at long last, there can be proof. Proof that I'm innocent, and proof that my tea is innocent. Ha, good morning, my dear fellows. Ha, oh, her locked homes. May you drink my tepid tea and fall forever silent. I thought the tea was innocent. Oh, Mr. Shelms, you came. How wonderful. That's what his wife says to him. Please, save your derision. I know what you're thinking. Good morning, he says, when it's really nearly time for luncheon. Your scorn is written clearly across your faces. Nobody said or thought anything of the sort. The truth is, I was determined that today would be the day. As sleep seduced me last night, I thought. Tomorrow, for once, I shall not oversleep. I'll rise early and be present in court to support my companions. Such spirited determination is a beauty all of its own, does it not? Oh, yes. And then I began to muse on the subject. Why do people oversleep, I queried. Why, time after time, do they make the same foolish blunder? And the answer came to me at once. It's so delightfully simple. People oversleep because they sleep. Well, is that not an astute insight into the matter? Oh, yes. Upon which realization I attempted an experiment. I didn't sleep a wink all night. And the results. By first light, I was exhausted and began to be assailed by fits of drowsiness. Shocking. And so, the conclusion of last night's experiment is this. A good night's sleep is quite simply essential. Yes, I, I think most of us probably knew that already. What others presuppose I prove by experimentation. That, my dear fellow, is the scientific method. Ah, yes, and one more thing. Do you remember this? Huh. Yes, of course. It's the poison that Miss Green was about to drink at the hospital yesterday. Oh, you didn't manage to... It was a laborious task, as the bottle was near empty, but such inconveniences do not hinder Sholmes. I managed to confirm that it contained strychnine. So I was right. Perhaps, though, of course, such circumstantial evidence doesn't prove Miss Green's guilt. I shall leave the bottle in your care now, but licking the inside of the neck is not recommended. How could I have a word? Oh, sorry. Totally wrong voice. Gregson, how good of you to come. Forget it. Excuse me. Wait a minute, Inspector. I, um, don't wish to make a nuisance of myself. From the look of your face, I'd say it's someone else who you think is making a nuisance of himself. My dear Inspector, please, speak freely. Pretend that I'm not here. Believe me, if I could do that, life would be a whole lot simpler for me. Do you have the results, Inspector? Of the investigation of Mr. Shamsu's room? Not yet. Shouldn't be long now, though. Now I'm here about something else. That dead convict, actually. Dead convict. Oh. You mean the man from this newspaper article we discovered yesterday in Mr. Shamsu's court? Shamsu's room? A man by the name of... Uh, yeah, Selden. I went through the archives of the yard and dug out the fellow's file. There's something in there that, uh, well, it caught my eye. Something caught your eye? What, Inspector, what? I've copied out the relevant parts for you, so you can read it for yourselves. Thank you. About him dying of illness in prison. <sighs> These documents include the details that were in the newspaper cutting we found in Mr. Shamsu's room. I'll rearrange everything in the court record so we don't have duplicate information. Why are you giving us a copy of this important file, though? Well, you're the ones who turned up the clue in the first place, aren't you? I'm just making sure things are handled in the proper fashion. Oh, Scotland Yard's workings are so wonderful! Indeed, my dear fellows, and the inspector here is a shining diamond in this crowd. A shining diamond 
in the rough, maybe. Look, I just don't want to be beholden to a lawyer, that's all. Well, that's the fair position, I suppose. Alright, time to go back to court. Well, I shall leave you then. I'll be listening with interest from the public gallery. Not not enough at all, certainly not. Thank you, Mr. Shams. I'm rather tired of seeing Mr. Mustache in floods of tears, personally. So the best of luck to you. Locum suited Mr. Naruhodo Esquire. Yes, Miss Natsume. It's time, isn't it? Yes, this is it. Miss Olive Green and Mr. William Shamspear. This is going to be the final battle. I won't really have saved Sosuke son until I've exposed the whole truth of everything that's been going on. But it's all coming to a head now. You can do it, Yunosuke. You have to. You got to. I believe in you. The 23rd of February. The old Bailey court. In the name of Her Majesty the Queen, I hereby declare this court to be in session again now. Before the recess, we heard a most startling accusation from the defense. Namely, that the victim of the case we heard here only a few days ago is the true perpetrator of this incident. Reckless, rash, and prejudiced charge of wrongdoing in my opinion, my lord. However, the, really, Van Zeeks is going to tell me about prejudice, huh? Mm-hmm, all right. The prosecution has tried to extend every courtesy to this amateur newcomer from dubious eastern shores. Thank you for that backhanded consideration. A rather cold assessment from the Honorable British Prosecutor, I must say. So, Lord Van Zeeks, is the new witness present and ready to take the stand? Ready and waiting in the witness's antechamber, my lord. Very well, Bailiff, bring the witnesses in. She's painting. <laughs> She's painting. What are you doing? Witnesses, state your names and occupation for the court, please. William Shamspear, my liege, for my occupation I can say only that I be a tragic victim to be pitied. Currently unemployed, in other words. Uh, I'm Olive Green, a fledgling artist. Well, no, not a fledgling, really. A, ho a hopeless failure who's too weak spirited to admit she has no talent, I suppose. Also currently unemployed, in other words. What a cottery. Cottery? Cottery? Learning so many British words. A small group of people with shared interests or taste, especially one that is exclusive of other people. Hmm. A cottery. Mr. Shamspear. My lord, I am thy humble servant. I'm afraid that you are no longer merely the victim in this affair. The possibility has been raised that you are in fact the assailant intent on taking the life of your fellow lodger. The part you have played in this whole business will be thoroughly scrutinized, I assure you. I would for naught else, my lord. And Miss Green? Yes? You are aware of the reason you have been summoned to this courtroom today, I presume? Yes, the officer did explain. He said I poisoned this ridiculous buffoon. And? Do you accept the charge, Miss Green? I don't know anything about any poisoning. And I don't know anything about this man. Come, lady. Die to live. Verily, I know not thy prickly pea pigmented personage. Very well. Let us proceed with the matter at hand. That being to ascertain whether or not Miss Green has any involvement in this affair. It's all very strange. Very strange indeed. Why would you suspect me? 
I barely ever go to the East End anyway. So it happens that I passed by that neighborhood six days ago. That's all. And on the night that this man was poisoned, I was still in hospital, fighting for my life. Yes. Having been unfortunately caught up in the incident on the street outside the Garadab household. An incident that rendered you unconscious for some three days. I was struck in the middle of my back by a knife. With no fault of my own and now I'm under suspicion? <sighs> what other irrelevant things might I be suspected of? Might I be suspected of? It's all very disturbing. Mm. Your energies may be better spent worrying about random knife attacks, I feel, Miss Green. At this point in time, all that appears to connect you with Mr. Shamsu's lodgings is the Brow Road incident six days ago. That's why. We would like you to testify formally now about exactly what happened. Oh no. The incident six days ago? You... You want me to relieve that awful incident? Accident? Unfortunately, yes. Please tell the court what happened that day. And of course, we will be interested to hear from you about your movements that day too, Mr. Shamspear. Eh? Hey? But, but what happened six days ago has nothing to do with me being poisoned. Let us proceed then. The witnesses will present their formal testimony to the court. On the subject of the incident that took place on Briar Road, the evening of the 17th of February. Okay, I'm not entirely sure where I'm going with this. I mean, like, I feel like the thing that we are needing to do right now is to establish that these two know each other in some regard. Because we know they know each other because we saw them together in the hospital, right? It was six days ago, about 5 p.m. I was walking along the snow and I was suddenly stabbed in the back. Coincidentally, it happened to be just outside the house where the men in this case had their lodgings. I was at the tavern on the eve at which thou speakest, for I had bespoke my supper. It was the first time I've been in the area. I had a little matter to attend to, that's all. Oh, it was not the first time you were there. Anyway, I, I was made straight to the hospital, so I knew nothing about all this business. There is no way that was her first time there. Yes, a second incident inside a week at what I believe to be aptly described as the haunted lodgings. One can only presume that this is most unfortunate coincidence. Meanwhile, you say you are not in your room, Mr. Shamsphere. It was the following morn when I did awaken that I learnt of the dire events. Mary, what a commotion did the officers of the law make on the floor above mine? And Sosuki son was arrested on suspicion of attempted murder. Her suspected. There is nothing connecting these two witnesses but happenstance. It's true. It does seem as though as though they're unrelated at first glance. But I'm not so sure. There's something lurking in the shadows here, if you're certain of it. And this is my one and only chance to expose it. Counsel, you may now cross-examine these two witnesses if you wish. Yes, my lord. Alright, so let's let's get to pressing. But I, I have a feeling I'm gonna need to either um like present the picture that we have of Garadeb and the dude, her uh, her boyfriend or whatever from before, or maybe the boyfriend's profile itself. One of those. Hold it! I'm well acquainted with the case. I'm sorry you had to go through all that. It was awful. I still can't quite believe I was unconscious for so long. I woke up to find that the case had been sold and the culprit arrested. Yes, the incident had been resolved already. Perhaps it would help you to consider it a bad dream that ended with your awakening. It should now be forgotten. Yes, I... I suppose so. Thank you. But before you put it completely behind you, Miss Green, I need you to remember the details one last time. You must tell the court exactly what happened that day for us to arrive at the truth about this new case. The trouble is, there's nothing to tell, really. I was just walking along the pavement. That's pretty cute. <laughs> How did you know that they had their lodgings there? 
What were you doing there that day, though? What do you mean? The art school you attend, what's it called? Uh, yeah, yeah, so it, it, it's the Thorndike Academy of Fine Arts. According to Mr. Shums, that's just in the vicinity of, Vic of Brixton Road, which is some ten stops away from the scene on the underground. I believe you mentioned before that you also live on Brixton Road, isn't that right? So why then would you have been walking along Briar Road in the middle of the East End? Well, um, it's because... Um, oh yes, of course, I, I thought it might make a nice picture. The witness is a student of art. City-dwelling artists can't all paint grand urban vistas. That, that's right. I, I happen to like the crumbling look of that part of town. Perhaps quaint would have been a less grating term. The point is, she's definitely hiding something. Yes. Seems she's not going to be forthcoming with the truth. If she's trying to hide why she was there that evening... It must mean there's a reason for her not wanting us to know. That's the key to this. And you, Mr. Shamsphere, on the evening of the incident six days ago, would you tell the court what exactly you were doing? Twould be my pleasure, sire. Hold it! A tavern, you say? Which one? Twas the slug and salad where I did tarry. To the jewel in the East End. And a little unexpected, I feel. Hmm? What do you mean, Lord Von Zeeks? The Slug and Salad offers unusually fine dining, for the locality at least. Not an establishment you'd expect to be patronized by a man with not even a crumb of bread in his room. It's true. The menu lists premium crusts of bread and glasses of water in different levels of cloudiness. What? What? What kind of menu is that? What? Britain, what are you doing? I would have expected grubs grubberly in the local vicinity of your appropriate for your means. Watery soup and mushy peas. Or rather, soupy water and pea-like mush. All equally appetizing. Hi. I just wanted to try some water in a different pub for once. What's wrong with that? How different can water really be? Or perhaps there's a more plausible explanation. A specific reason why you had to go to that particular establishment. Agreed. The fact that on that day of all days he dined at a place he wouldn't normally, it does stand out. So Mr. Shamsu's own actions on the day of the incident six days ago were slightly suspicious. I wonder if we have some evidence that can explain those actions. Do we? Receipt. Map. Um. Okay, this doesn't have anything there. There's this. The ripped envelope. Maybe he got invited to something? Scissors. person in question must have been right-handed. <laughs> so I mean, what's the adventures her life comes? Good. Hmm. We may maybe he got invited out. Bar of soap. Photograph print. I wonder if the person no. Wait, why can't I examine the bottle of it? That's weird. So this is the poison I've been hearing so much about. Switch name. There are a few rumors on the bottom bottom of the bottle here, look. You must be tempted to try it. Of course not. We don't lose this trial. <laughs> no, even if we lose the trial. No, we mustn't lose the trial in the first place, Mr. Naohodo. Make your mind up, Sir Salvasan. Okay, what about this? 
18 counts of burglary, 6 counts of suspected murder, died of natural causes whilst in prison, his final moments witnessed only by his cellmate. The estimated 1,000 pounds worth of loot he stole remained unrecovered. Manchester's strange way prison announced the death of convicted murderer and burglar seldom by natural causes in the early hours this morning. <sighs> he was suffering with fever since the end of October. Alerted by the shouts of his fellow cellmate, medical staff arrived to find him already dead before his capital punishment could be carried out. Did he fake his death? I mean, his final moments his final moments witnessed only by his cellmate. This maybe his cellmate was in on it. I don't think I have evidence yet. I wish we did, but sadly I can't think of anything at the moment. Oh. If we find a clue that could explain why Mr. Shamsu went there, we must present it to the court. Yes, absolutely. If that is all in this matter, counsel, I would ask Miss Green to reiterate her next statement. The the only thing that I can even think of that might have been close was um the letter piece. So now this this feels relevant. What little matter, Miss Green? Please elaborate. It's nothing, really. It's not worth mentioning. If you remember, you mentioned it to us yesterday at the hospital. Uh, it was related to the card you were holding. Miss Green. What was that? Clearly just hit something behind her back. From memory, I believe the card contained a note that read, I have information regarding the death of Duncan Ross. What does that matter? This has nothing to do with Duncan. Excuse me. Mr. Shamspear, do you have something to share with the court? To be or not to be, that is the question. Ah, pray forgive me. The great bard's word springeth from within me with narrow thought. Don't tell me. Because you're possessed by Shakespeare's spirit, right? Hearing Miss Green's words a moment ago seemed to make you think of something. Something of relevance, perhaps. Yeah. Hmm. Well. Nay. Nay, sire. It was nothing at all. Presumably you know the name, though. Mr. Duncan Ross, I mean. After all, you were both lodgers in the same house. I would it were so, but sadly nay. Lodging be a lonely occupation, sir. My, la my, my lodging fellows be rarely known to me. So you haven't heard of him, even though he passed away in the room just one floor above yours. Hmm. Miss Green. Me, me, my lord. Have I done something wrong? The card that was mentioned before, containing the note. Do you have it upon your person? Uh, oh shit, look at that letter color. I I do, yes, but I don't need it anymore. In fact, I should throw it away, really. Before you dispose of it, the court will take it as evidence, please. Of course. That's what links Mr. Shams to Miss Green. It's Duncan Ross. Now, continue your testimony, please, Mr. Miss Green. Yes, you didn't regain consciousness until the day after the trial, did you? In the early hours. Exactly. So how could I have had anything to do with it? And yet you still hold me in here, court, in here to court like this, honestly. So at the time of the poisoning, the witness was unconscious in her hospital bed. Could there be a more airtight alibi, I ask you? And yet, in spite of that, you claimed that I was the culprit. Well, I... I, um... But you certainly haven't produced any evidence to support your wild claim, have you? None at all. 
There you have it. The good lady has yet to see evidence. My learned Nipponese friend. I'm working on it. Counsel, I'll point out here that the jury's next decision will be final. We're really up against the wall here. Oh, Mr. Narahodo, you pursued Mr. Shamsil wonderfully there. It worked out well, hasn't it? We have a new clue at last. Right. Now, I need to pull off a really insightful objection somewhere. Object objection. Well. As you've managed to expose this promising new angle, I wonder if you should perhaps try to develop that. Yes, of course. And yelling out objections isn't necessarily the best way to do that, I suppose. Right. Because we need to press on that one statement again to get the uh, evidence bit. I want to examine that piece of evidence, though. Can I actually read it? The envelope has been worked over rather carelessly, hasn't it? Miss Green strikes me as the type to open correspondence more neatly than that. Ah. What is it? The way the envelope is torn, I'm almost sure I've seen that exact same shape somewhere else. Oh, you don't mean... Were you thinking of this piece of evidence, Mr. Naruhodo? Exactly! That's it? Try to match them up? Mm hmm. They go together perfectly. This torn off end of the envelope clearly belongs to this card. Huh. So she left it behind when she went into the room? Okay. That seems like the piece of evidence we need. So I'm gonna save. Uh, it was either the second or third one, I think. But I'll just press everything and get until we get to that bit. Tell, just walking there. I think it was this one. I think it was the second. What were you doing? Alright, and we established that she's far away, so it's strange for her to be in the east end. So why then were you been walking along? It's cause Okay, so some bullshit. Definitely hiding something. Here it is. Okay. Uh, okay. Wait, was it on his stuff? Hold it! Sorry, I'm, I'm not reading out loud because we have, we've seen this all already. So. Wait, was that like Badoop Doop noise? Did I miss a pursuit? Cross the bread and glasses of water. Specific reason why I had to go there. Because you had to meet her there, maybe? I'm going to try for it. Mrs. Shamsphere. Yes, sire. On the day in question, is it not the case that you visited the Slug and Salad, a place you don't normally patronize, for a very particular reason? I... I don't know what you're talking about. Pray, if thou hast some perfect speech, sir. Very well. I will present the court with evidence. Evidence that explains why you had to be at the Slug and Salad that day. Namely... This... I believe this card reveals the answer. Good lord, Miss Green's card, you mean? That's right, my lord. It reads, I have information regarding the death of Duncan Ross. Come to the Slug and Salad on Briar Road at 5 p.m. on the 17th. Don't tell anybody else about this letter or the meeting. It is a matter of utmost importance. 
Mr. Shamspear, your actions on the afternoon of Miss Green's stabbing are exactly as described in this note. Uh, personally, I find it hard to believe that's a coincidence. Don't you, Mr. Shamspear? Um, well... Excuse me? Can I say something? Yes, Miss Green. That card was delivered to me. It doesn't have anything to do with this old man, does it? Well, well you'd think so, yes, but it's hard to believe it's merely... My lord, may I? You what, Miss Green? I'd like to make something very clear about that card. Very well, then. You may amend your testimony. To include details about the peculiar note. What are you going to say? Note was floating at my address. It's nothing to do with the odd man next to me here. Um, fuck it's not, lady. The only question is if I should press on that. Or just present the thing that clearly indicates that it is something to do with it. Because, fuck you, Olive. Objection. The day before the incident, exactly one week ago now, this note was delivered to your address. And upon carrying out the instructions on the note, you found yourself in hospital. Yes, I did. It's terrible, everything that's happened to me. Yes, it is terrible. If it's all true, that is. What, what do you mean? Miss Green, have a look at this, please. It's the torn-off end of an envelope. Oh, is it? And it so happens that it fits together perfectly with the envelope of the note you received. Oh, where did you find that? In Mr. Shamsphere's room. Yeah, in, in my room. Mr. Shamsphere, do you perhaps remember this note from somewhere? Uh, well... Your actions that afternoon follow the instructions in the note to the letter. Come to the slug and salad on Briar Road at 5 p.m. at the 17th. And so that's exactly where you went. Let me ask you again, Mr. Shamsphere. You already knew about this note, didn't you? And you, Miss Green? Uh, what did I do? As this torn off end of the envelope proves, the note was originally in Mr. Shamsphere's room. So, how is it that it came to be in your possession? I... I don't have the first idea. I'm just a fledgling artist after all. There's only one ex... There's only one explanation. You broke into Mr. Shamsphere's room and stole it. Why, though? Why would she steal it? You did what? So, thou hast what? You broke... I mean, thou were in my room! What on earth do you want with me? It would seem that both witnesses need to testify again. Ugh. Miss Green. Yes? Whilst you have the court's sympathy, I'm sure, for the suffering you have endured in recent events, Anyone found to be giving false testimony in a court of law will be duly punished. Please bear that in mind. Yes, I know. Very well then, witnesses. You will give formal testimony again now on the subject of this curious anomaly regarding the note Miss Green claims to have received. Indeed. The anomaly of the nut. Sometimes I miss the button a few times. It's not my fault. Oh, I do remember now. It was a week ago, per adventure, that note was delivered unto me. On the day right therein, I did tarry a long hour at the shrug, slug and salad, yet nobody came. Thereafter, on the evening I shared the company of the Japanese fellow, I did see the note had vanished. I don't know what you mean. You think I snuck into this man's room, do you? Why would I? I can point out the villain here. As for that torn off piece of the envelope, I don't know anything about it. Hmm. 
You now claim to have received this letter, do you, Mr. Shamsphere? Faith, tis so, my lord. And I would swear to have set it upon the table in my humble lodgings. Yet, tis clear to me now that since I returned from the tavern that night, I have not laid eyes upon it. Hmm. Oh, that being the case. Young lady, it would appear that your testimony was... A lie? Is that what you think? How unfair of you to think I'm the one lying? I beg your pardon? I'm just a fledgling artist, as I said. And fledgling artists don't lie. That note was delivered to me at my address. Besides... We all know who the liar around here is. If that's true, Miss Green, how do you explain the facts? This part of the envelope was, without question, found in Mr. Shams. I don't see why I should explain. Sorry? I'm a fledgling artist. My job here is just to say what happened, that's all. It's your job to give the explanations and the proofs. You, the fledgling lawyer. The fledgling will do his best. Evidently, my learned friend's cross-examination is our only hope of learning the truth. Well, counsel. I'm ready, my lord. Very well, then. The defense will now proceed with the cross-examination of the witness. Miss Green clearly did break into Mr. Shamsu's room. There can be no question of that. And that's how she acquired the note. Yes, two facts that are suddenly leading me to a possible explanation for all of this. And it's not a pretty one. That would she have poisoned it, though? I don't have... How would she know to poison the pipe? Is my question. Like, she would have had to figure out everything that we did before about, like, blowing into the pipes and etc. Unless she was, unless she, like, put the strichny on the pipe thinking that it would just go through his room naturally somehow. Which is still weird. Let's, let's press some. And can you shed any light on the contents of the note at all? Nay, sire. Tis as strange to me as a foreign tongue. Even with a knowledge of literature as great as mine own, barely it is impenetrable. But Mr. Duncan Ross had lodging in the same household as you. In effect, he was your neighbor. So surely you know him, didn't you? Alack, if the choice be twixt I knew him and I knew him not. Then tis with foreboding that I be forced to declare we are by some small measure acquainted. Despite your claims, though, you follow the note's instructions and went to the slug and salad. Presumably that was nothing to do with your knowledge of literature. <laughs> Nay, not all of the better of me, sire, save for the lure of curiosity. So tis true, I was compelled by mine own eager heart to betake myself to the tavern. But in the end, my curiosity was not sated. Saturated, I suppose. Hold it! So, even after waiting for an hour, nobody appeared. Well, hmm. Yes, sire. Tis as thou sayest. Really? You paused for a moment before you answered. In truth, when thou asked whether nobody appeared, I did suddenly recall. Really? Do you mean to tell the court that somebody did appear after all? I was not alone that night at the slug and salad, my lord, no. Tis returning to me now. I did treat my lips to almost clear water, and mine innards to a premium crust of bread. And all around me danced a great many companions. What do you mean? Fly, sire, flies. Good lord. In the name of Beelzebub, what were they? Fairies, perchance. From a midsummer's night, from a midsummer's night dream, come to taunt me. I think they were just flies. I can't help thinking that the flies ought to choose something more wholesome to buzzle around. Is that wrong of me? <laughs> no, Susado, that is not wrong of you. <laughs> also, just gotta... gotta say, having recently beaten Lost Boat 6 of Fake Granddaughter, Midsummer's Night Dream is uh, very topical to me. Hold it! 
When exactly did you notice it gone missing? Such idle thoughts now occupy my mind. I am busied with greater ideas. In other words, you didn't notice. Several days passed between your outing to the tavern and Mr. Knott's May's visit to your room. Yes, it would appear that the note had disappeared sometime in that interval. Such idle thoughts now occupy my mind. I am busied with greater ideas. And yet during that time, Miss Green was comatose in hospital, was she not? Clearly then, she could not have been stealing things from Mr. Shamsir's room. Uh, uh, yes, yes, of course. It's, it's all some sort of misunderstanding, isn't it, Mr. Prosecutor, sir? You have so far failed to give a satisfactory explanation as to how you came by the note. Uh. I am not here to advocate for your defense, madame. I won't tolerate inconsistencies in your story. You would do well to remember that. Oh, dear me. What's Lord Van Zick's getting at? Why would I? Hold it! it seems that this note was actually delivered to Mr. Shamsby about one week ago. It does it. But for some reason, it ended up in your possession. I can't think of any way that could have happened except for you breaking into Mr. Shag's, Mr. Shamsir's lodgings. But for what reason would the witness have done that? Uh, I am... Um, I won't deny that Miss Green's possession of the note would appear to defy logic. However, until and unless her involvement in this case can be proven in some other way. Any further pursuit of this note is meaningless. Miss Green could have only come to be in possession of the note by stealing it from Mr. Shamsir's room. And yet, there's no obvious reason why she would have done such a thing. What if there was some other reason she broke into his lodgings, though? Yes, we should pursue that idea, Miss Narahodo. We're close now. I can feel it. We're so close to a breakthrough. Maybe there is something of Duncan's in there that she wanted? So you don't want to tell the court the truth about the letter, is that it? A fledgling artist, remember? Artists are nearly always introverted characters. Introverted? Fie! This fledgling doth readily cast aspersion, aspersions about my nature. Yet I am an angel, a seraph. Birds do harmonize with my song. The wind doth frolic on my wing. Oh pity! Wherefore dost thou accuse one so pure of heart, ample woman? <laughs> <laughs> Got his stupid little dances. Pure of heart? I don't think so. You know, fledgling like me can see you're just a failure. Tragedy. Thou shalt not know the true heart of an artist until thine instruction here after thy death. Oh, the days. Oh, the years. Alas, to enlighten thee. Thou must wait so long and in vain. Mr. Narahodo, interject with some clever remark. This is your chance to shine. I'm no Shakespearean actor, Mr. Sato. No, as far as I can tell, the only thing that's going to resolve this argument is evidence. Oh, sorry. It's evidence. Yes. It's clear that Miss Green did in fact break into Mr. Shamsu's room, isn't it? And that's where she found this letter. Yes, two more or less foregone conclusions that lead me to one terrifying conclusion. Terrifying? Yes. I'm afraid to say that the outcome of this cross-examination may well change how we look at this case completely. Well, I'm glad that that's short, at least. Okay. Um, so I think it's it's green statements that we probably are supposed to press. Or not press, sorry. Um, do the thing. It's not this. On the day ready to tear you long out this one's on. Yet nobody came except for the flies, apparently. On the evening I should look this thing that had vanished. That sounds fair, sure. You think I have something that's been why would I? Okay. 
I'm... Hmm. It's gonna be either, like, the, um... Like, her boy toy? Or maybe the clipping? Um, maybe this. Or this. So this has Garadub in it, right? So I'm thinking Garadub's... Like, this is Garadub's lodgings, and there's Duncan. And so, like, clearly Duncan is known to these people. And she thinks he murdered him, maybe? Somehow, because he's involved with the, the building? Um... I can't actually swap the people here, it seems. So I guess I have to make do with one of these types of things. I mean, I assume it was to poison him, but... I'm gonna Objection. try... Nope, okay. Crowds are being suspicious! I mean, I am suspicious, but apparently I shouldn't be suspicious of that. Why would I? To kill him. Objection. Okay, it is the bottle. Okay, I, I figured it was either one or the two. One of the others. So. Yesterday at the hospital, we saw you with this bottle. And though the content spilled during the course of our meeting, a small quantity remained. <sighs> According to the defense independent analysis, Mr. Shum's chemistry set, the liquid that was still in the bottle was identified as strychnine. What? Strychnine? The very same poison that afflicted Mr. Shamsphere. Huh. Miss Green, you broke into this man's lodgings for one reason, and one reason alone. To cover the end of the pipe that beats the gas lamp in Mr. Shamsphere's room with poison. Okay, can this be? You... You broke into my room to... It may seem incredible to the court, but from the remaining clues, there's only one logical conclusion that we can reach. The person who attempted to take Mr. Shamsu's life with poison was you, Miss Olive Green. Oh, oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dearie. No dearie me. That is the one heck of a dress she has. Oh, order, order. Counselor, are you seriously suggesting this woman put poison on the end of the gas pipe with intent to kill? Yes, my lord. There's no other way to explain the facts. But if Miss Green did indeed set this odious trap six days ago, and the victim had put his mouth to the his put his mouth to the pipe that very evening as expected, the attempted murder would have happened six days ago, surely. Well, that's a very good point. Perhaps not, my lord. I, I beg your pardon. There was a significant police presence in the area that evening on account of the incident on Briar Road. Local residents were being interviewed throughout the night as part of the ongoing inquiry. A circumspect criminal would likely have chosen not to carry out any wrongdoing at that time. Lord Van Zinks. And of course, the following morning there was more activity at Mr. Shamsphere's address. Activity. <laughs> yes. You mean his fellow lodger, Mr. Knotts, may be arrested on suspicion of murder? That's right. And as the defense has already proposed, Mr. Shams, who was meddling with the gas in the pipes for very sinister reason himself, to cause the gas stove in Mr. Knotts may's room to go out, thereby asphyxiating the occupant. But once Mr. Knotts may had been arrested, his room was under constant surveillance by the police. In the circumstances, Mr. Shams had no reason to blow air into the gas pipe. His intended victim being in a prison cell. With the need to tamper with the gas removed, the poison on the pipe lay dormant. And then, three days ago now, the situation changed again. Right, Mr. Noxmay's trial, which took place here at the Old Bailey, came to an end. The trial in which the man stood accused of stabbing Miss Green in the back, 
but was duly acquitted. That resulted in Mr. Natsume returning to his lodgings for the first time in two days. And that very night, his gas stove mysteriously went out, and Mr. Shamsphere was mysteriously poisoned. Uh, um... In conclusion, the poison that was present on the mouth of the gas pipe had been put there in the victim's room some four days earlier. Mary! How did she reach the gas pipe? How, how did she... How did she reach the gas pipe? Like, I know there's a box here, but it's still pretty high up and she's pretty damn short. With that new understanding, it becomes clear that this letter was all part of the plan. What plan? The court will recall that the note gave instructions to visit the slug and salad at five o'clock and that the recipient should tell nobody else. The reason for those instructions are now clear. To ensure that the lodger would not be at home at the stated time. To, to make sure I wasn't home. Exactly. While you were out, Miss Green could safely slip into your room, knowing that she wouldn't be disturbed. You, you mean to say that letter... Was written by Miss Green, yes. And in order to cover her tracks, she took it away with her when she left. Just after she smeared poison over the mouth of the gas pipe in your room. Order! Order! What do you have to say for yourself, witness? Just who are you? Why did you try to kill me? Miss Green's motive should be obvious. It's all tied up with someone whose name we've heard several times already during the course of this trial. So, that's what's behind all of this. You will share your apparent understanding with the court, please, counsel. Which person is behind this woman's motive for the attack on the victim's life? Take that! Duncan Ross. That's right. Before the defendant, Mr. Notsmay, took up residence in the lodgings at Mr. Gairdeb's, somebody else was renting the room. Mr. Duncan Ross. I knew I'd heard the name somewhere else. It was all over the papers a month ago, when the man died in strange circumstances at the haunted, haunted lodgings. Hmm, that does ring a vague. Oh, of course, yes, I remember now. The young man they claim was strangled by the convict's curse or some such. Sadly, my lord, it wasn't a curse of any kind, nor was it an accident. The man died as a result of Mr. Shamsia blowing into the gas pipes and causing gas to leak into the room. It was murder, plain and simple. But why, though? <laughs> what do you know? The world is so unfair. Curses, curious deaths. That's all people care about. If it's an interesting story they want to know, it doesn't cross their minds that real people are involved. What's the board just one month later? What's the story lost its appeal? Everybody's already forgotten them. You, you mean you? Duncan was. Mr. Ross was Miss Green's fiance. F -f fiance? You may not have known until now who Miss Green really is, Mr. Shamspear. But she's known exactly who you are all along. Because you're her sworn enemy. The murderer who took the life of the man she was to marry. Marry? Miss Green, is it not the case that in order to exact revenge on Mr. Shamsphere, you smeared poison over the end of a gas pipe? This, this is all quite extraordinary. Am I correct in my understanding that you now accuse both parties, counsel? Each on different counts of murder. Yes, my lord. That's correct. Objection. Inhaling so deeply, it appears that my fledgling learned friend has taken in a lungful of dubious gas that's causing his judgment to be clouded. What? Why would Mr. Shamsphere have wanted to kill these lodgers, as you say? 
You have completely failed to provide a motive to substantiate your accusation against the man. Yes, yes, that's right, Mr. Reaper, my leech. I, I have been slighted. It is lies, all lies, I deny every utterance. You'll have to forgive me, Mr. Narrowhooder, sir. But I don't intend to admit to anything either. Miss Green. I'm sure you'll think I'm being very rude, but... I'm not going to be sent to the gallows for the likes of this scoundrel. But you broke into the man's room. If you didn't do it to smear poison on the pipe, what was your reason? I, I thought I'd have a look around, that's all. Sorry? You're right, I suspected him. So I thought perhaps I might find some evidence or something in his room. Evidence that it was him who took Duncan's life. Oh foulness! Oh villainy! Oh tyranny! Oh runditity of woman! But in any case, whenever I leave my room, I do turn the key in the lock. That whole place is falling apart. The locks on the doors are no different. Duncan showed me once how to unlock the door with some turps and a piece of wire. Oh awfulness! Oh artfulness! Oh tyranny! Oh profanity of woman! We will consider your trespassing on some future occasion. Before now, tell the court what you found, what evidence your search revealed. Well, I spotted the note that I sent him lying on the floor. When I went to pick it up, I noticed something. One of the floorboards was loose, and underneath it I discovered a secret hiding place. Heh. <laughs> yes, we also discovered that hiding place. Inside we found a newspaper cutting, a photograph, and an empty tin box. Ah, uh, yes. Well, the thing is, when I found it, the box wasn't empty. What? There was something in it. Yes. Was it the poison? Oh no, it was a key. This rather nice key. Oh, okay. What are you doing with that? What the? Every ounce of color has drained from his face. Give it here. Give it to me now. It's mine. I inherited it. What was that, witness? What did you say? You inherited it. Ah, um, ah he's Southern's buddy. Uh, no, I am. Um, what's all this about? He inherited that key. It was obviously important to you since you'd gone to such lengths to hide it. So I took it. I don't know what it's for, but you took something precious from me, so I took something precious from you. So what if it means you can't open something now? I don't care. Give it back this minute! Give it to me! Is he Sauron? Because that's what I'm thinking. Calm yourself, witness! So Mrs. Shamspear has tried, and in one case succeeded to take the life of two lodges now. Yes, his motive for doing so is the key to everything that's happened. It's true that there appears to be no motive to support the accusation against Mrs. Shamspear at first. But considering everything we now know, I think there's actually something that could explain it. What? I need to recall every piece of evidence at our disposal. Everything we've seen and heard. Because I'm sure that I just caught a glimpse of the link that runs through all these events. In that case, counsel. Evidence. Now. It's probably going to be the uh, bits from Greg. From Gregson. Like, give the details about the Southern kiss. What is it that you think? I'm <laughs> sorry. Busy yawning. Estimated 1,000 pounds worth of loot he stole remains unrecovered. I think it's that. It's either going to be that or... Um, Oh no, she's combined it, okay. I saved, right? Take that! I think it's this. That's an official police report, is it not? The Selden file. How did you get hold of that? Is it Selden? The now sadly deceased Mr. Ross and the defendant Mr. Knotsmay have only one thing linking them. 
the fact that they had lodgings in the same room. Well, yes, we, we know this certainty. A room that was formerly occupied by Sullivan. Until, that is, he was arrested by Scotland Yard for his involvement in multiple burglaries. Hmm, I see. And it so happens that the convict Sullivan left behind one very substantial mystery when he died. The sum one thousand pounds worth of loot that he stole, which has yet to remain to be found. Oh, yes, of course, it's coming back to me now. Written in his file here. A thousand pounds lost in route to hell. That was how the papers summed it up. And it seems that one particular fellow inmate was with the convict in his final moments. It's not hard to imagine Selden entrusting that inmate with his most closely guarded secret. The location of the stolen loot, and perhaps a key to unlock whatever container the valuables were in. Oh, you, you mean this key is... Mr. Shamsphere, it was you, wasn't it? You were at the Capitol of Vendor's side when he died, were you not? Oh, what are you talking about? This is a false charge, I tell you, a false charge! The name of the inmate who was with Sullivan at his death isn't noted in this file, but a simple telegram to the prison where he died would quickly tell us how false the charge really is. But, but even if it's true, why would the man be so intent on killing every subsequent occupant of the convict's lodgings? There's only one explanation for that, my lord. It was in that very room that Sullivan hid his loot. So, it all comes out. Yes, and having established that, all of Mr. Shamsfield's subsequent actions start to make perfect sense. When he was let out of prison following Sullivan's death, he made immediately for Mr. Gairdub's lodgings in the hope of renting Sullivan's own room. However, the retired army man was unable to offer him the occupation of his choice, beside the accommodations, because Sullivan's own room had already been left to somebody had been let to somebody else, Mr. Duncan Ross. Which is why Mr. Sham <coughs> Which is why Mr. Shamsphere subsequently devised his gas based plot to kill the occupant of the room. And when he was successful, he presumably intended to inquire about switching into the newly vacant room. However, a certain jittery someone had beaten him to it. Mr. Sosaki Natsume, the defendant in this case, no less. So you decided to use the ploy with the gas again, didn't you, Mr. Shamsphere? This time to oust Mr. Natsume. All for one simple and avaricious reason. Avaris, avaricious? Avaricious? Avaricious reason to get your hands on the thousand pounds of loot left behind by the dead convict. Uh, you. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, it's 10 pm, I can't really show. Looks like I'm gonna stuff it before we get to stretch me neck. Listen, I want you to add me loot, anything, to stop the coppers getting their mitts on it. It's in the room where I was lodging when they got me. Yeah, this is the key to it. Take it. Always stay one step ahead, mate. See you in hell, I guess. Shamsphere. Spine. Hmm? What did you say? It's mine. That loot is mine. Whoa. Crazy face. Mr. Shamsphere. It's all lies. I, I don't accept any of it. Why should I? After all, you don't have a shred of evidence. You can't prove I killed that fellow. Forsooth, I'm the victim here, remember. Isn't that right, ladies and gentlemen? If I don't admit to it, there's nothing you can do. You can't arrest me for the time being, anyway. Barely, you can't arrest the victim, can you? 
Is that right, ladies and gentlemen? I'm so close, I just need a few more hours. I swore to myself that I get my hands on it, and I can almost taste it now. Do you really think I just give up? There's no question in my mind now. This man is guilty through and through. But he seems so utterly intoxicated by the idea of that loot. I'm afraid that however hard you press him, he'll never admit what he's done, Mr. Naruhodo. There's a way. Pardon? There's one way I can finish him. No. He's already committed the most heinous crimes to get his hands on that loot. Which means all we need to do is find it first. A fine plan, were it not for the fact that the police thoroughly searched the room following the death of Mr. Ross. If it's there at all, it must be very well hidden indeed. Hmm. Without conclusive evidence, I certainly cannot rule. If only... If only there was some way we could find the convict's loot quickly. This is the final piece in this complex puzzle. But I think we might have it in our possession already. Or rather, I think we may well have something that can help us find where the loot is hidden. My lord? Yes, Council. The defense would like to make a proposal about how to find the late convict's hidden loot. I believe we are already in possession of something that could give us a clue as to its whereabouts. Was it going to be like the skin print or something? It's our last chance. So it has to be worth a gamble. Besides, we've used the same technique once already. It definitely paid off then. Very well then, Council. Let the court hear your idea. What do you propose we can use in order to locate the hidden place of the deceased convict's hall? I don't know. The handprints, maybe? Actually, would that work? We don't have the skin of the person, so... Hmm... Shows Mr. Garrett together. I mean, that's not going to do anything. Bottle of poison. Um. Book receipts, street map. Soap? <laughs> like. Not the soap. Gas me. Is it the gas? I mean, it has a it has a padlock for a key, and we know they don't open. But how would he have? He couldn't have hit it in the gas inside Natsume's room, right? Because they there's a meter guy who checks it, right? And it's been a month. What do you propose we can use in order to locate the hiding place of the deceased convex hall? Boom. So like the the dialogue here makes me think maybe the skin prints, but they'd have to accept that, and I don't know if they will. Gas meter. This is my proposal, my lord. Good gracious, we, we can use that, can't we? Am I right? I have another idea. Stop wasting the court's time with this senseless rubbish. That is my proposal, my nippity's friend. So not that. 
his proposal was better. We've already found one secret hiding place during the course of the investigation of the Sinaroda. Yes, I, I suppose we have. Though someone else beat us to it. The findings that we use are still in the court record hour. Oh, it is? Okay. It's the skin prints. If I'm not mistaken, those are Mr. Shamspear's handprints on the wall of his lodgings. That's right, my lord. Exposed as a result of the defense's independent investigation of the scene. Based on a wonderful new discovery in the field of forensic science by the great detective, Mr. Shams. A great detective. That's not some kind of a joke. Do you really think I'm going to be daunted by a man with such a ridiculous title? I should think the great... Oh. I should think the great bard ought to recognize such a title when he hears one, Mr. Shamspear. Perhaps you should compete for the honor of most ridiculous title. Tua! Tis Herlock Sholmes himself! What are you doing here, great detective? Your usual haunts are the filthy back streets of the capital, are they not? <laughs> Mr. Reaper! It's been too long, and I see your complexion has worsened since last we met. M Mr. Sholmes, he does know Lord Van Six then. Well, I'd have to say something like that in any case. Mr. Sholmes, though you may be heralded as a great detective by the population at large, that does not give you the right to come and go in my courtroom as you see fit. If I may, my lord, Mr. Sholmes' newly developed scientific method has helped us to uncover vital clues in this case already. Clues, you say? I call them skin prints, my lord. My method identifies every location touched by an individual under scrutiny. It's the method by which we were able to ascertain this gentleman's gas pipe activities. Mm. You need only a small sample of something the individual has previously touched to make an indicator solution. In your case, sir, I used the teacup you had been holding. Elementary. So now, Mr. Narahodo. Uh, yes? What am, I sub what am I to use as a sample to make the indicator solution this time? Thank you for offering to help, Mr. Sholmes. When the convict was arrested, he was living in what was now sosagi sons room. We need a sample to help locate Soden's loot that's hidden in his old room. What form will the sample take? Present a person? What? Was the cat in the room? His cat isn't a thing, right? No, it's not good. I mean, not me, it's not gonna be it. Shamsphere. They both have the same thing. It's not gonna be the soap. I don't care about the poison. Who took the picture, I wonder? Are there clues? Um, I suppose sham sphere. I mean, I don't really have evidence, right? Though I do still have this random thing in here for some reason. I don't really know why. <laughs> um. Uh, who would I don't think I have evidence right like so it's got to be a person because we don't have anything that would have had some stuff on it right Um, people wise. So, what am I trying to do? A sample to help locate someone's loot that's hidden in his old room. What form will the sample take? 
Is one of these people someone who could have ran into Selvum? I think it needs to be a person. We will need something of substance in order to create the indicator solution to find its loot. And something the convict owned happens to be in the possession of somebody listed in the court record. <laughs> Upon my word, Mr. Narahodo, your powers of reasoning appear to be on the up. So, which particular person do you have in mind? From whom can we obtain possession of the late convict Sullen to create the indicator system? Oh, okay, it's the key. Right? Miss Green? M me? What do you want with me? The key around your neck, if you please. Sorry? Mm. That key belonged to Selden. There will be remnants of secretions from the man's skin on its surface that we can use. Very true. That is the sample we need. Using it, we can, recreate, we can create the indicator solution required for Mr. Shum's skin print seeker and find out exactly what Selden touched in the room that he used to rent. Mr. Shamsphere has one great to another, I assure you. If the late convict hall is hidden someone in his former lodgings, I shall uncover it in no more than 30 minutes. So, Mr. Shamsphere, the truth is well within our grasp now, and as such, you will never get your hands on Southern stolen wealth. In that case, how gladly did Mr. Shums have this key? No! Get the key to me! The detective shan't have it! It's over, Mr. Shamsphere. No. No. You're out of options now. There's only one other thing left. Sorry. There's only one thing left for you to do. Admit your guilt. Whoa. Oh, Shamble Spear. Despair. Be thy name. I like that he was full of confetti. Also, green has disappeared. Okay. That's one down. We still have to prove, or rather get Olive to admit her guilt. I never intended to kill the man. I just... I just wanted to drive him out of the room. That's all. So you'd have time to find the Convex Hall of Stolen Goods. Yet after you'd killed the young man, you still didn't move into the room. I asked the landlord, of course. I pleaded with him, but he refused. Why? I was three months behind with the rent, for one thing. Uh, Mr. Gadget really has had a lot to put up with. And he had the gas repair work done immediately afterwards, putting the room out of action for a while. And then, this Japanese man swooped in just the right moment to sign the new lease. Poor Mr. Natsume. What unfortunate timing. This reminds me that I need to renew my lease for my apartment, actually. And then five days ago, after the incident on Briar Road, when the Japanese fellow caught himself arrested. I thought I'd finally had my chance, but it wasn't to be. No. The scene was sealed off and guarded by the police night and day. And if I remember rightly, Mr. Shum spent the whole day in there reading books. Oh, I couldn't even enter the room, let alone search for the loot. Which is why, on the day Mr. Notsme was acquitted and returned to his room, you once again tried your trick of blowing air into the gas pipe that feeds the stove in his room. Unbeknownst to you, however, that action would lead you into a deadly trap. William Shamsphere? How does it go? To be or not to be? 
that is the question? From Shakespeare's Hamlet, Act 3, Scene 1. Well, let me tell you, in your case, it's not to be. That is the answer. You deserve to die for what you've done. Damn. <sighs> and you, Olive? What do you deserve for trying to kill him? At first, I really did think it was just a terrible accident. I'll never forget our conversation the night before Duncan died. The gas supply in my new lodgings are a complete disaster, you know, Olive. The, the gas supply? Yes, the stove always seems to go out in the middle of the night for some reason. That's no joke. They say it's the convict's curse. Oh, Duncan, please, don't stay there. I don't care how cheap it is. All right, then, if that's that, if it's that important to you, I'll start looking for a new place. There are spare rooms at my house. Why don't you leave that horrible room tonight? No, I'd better not. We said we'd wait until we graduated before we told our parents, remember? But that was the last time we ever spoke. That very night, he fell victim to the gas. If only I'd known it was going to happen. I'd have insisted he'd left that horrible room that instant. But instead, all I've been left with is a bit of regret. I stopped going to school. But something kept trying me back to the house on Briar Road. I saw a stooped eastern looking man with a mustache coming out of the house one day when I was there. He walked up the road to grub scrubbery for some food, so I followed him and sat myself down next to him. He had some watery looking soup and started to pick a quarrel with the publican. This the place is cursed, I tell you, cursed! The ghost of that convict who used to live there is trying to suffocate me! I, I wake up in the middle of the night, freezing to death because the stove has gone out. The room is full of gas and I can hardly breathe. But the pipes have been checked. No problem there. It's like I'm the problem. That's what they're thinking. But how could that be? Duncan was gone and now this man had almost suffered the same fate. Could it really be a curse? Then I remembered. A rumor I'd heard about how the gas companies go around investing in the gas installations. A rumor? Ah, you mean? Yes. Everybody's heard the stories, it seems. About how they go around checking the pipes. How anything connected to the gas can be extinguished by blowing air into the pipework. That's when it started. A little flicker of doubt in the back of my mind. This wouldn't go away. Was it really an accident, though? Once I'd had the idea, it wouldn't leave me alone. It plagued me day and night. So I bought this at one of the black markets in the East End. A, a black market? I've never been. Just heard people talk about them. And you really can buy anything you can think of there. In some ways, being able to get my hands on this so easily made me even more determined. I had to find out one way or another. Was Duncan's death an accident? Or was it murder? And your chosen method for establishing the truth was simple, but highly effective. Smear poison on the gas pipe you suspected the man of tampering with, and wait. If Mr. Shamsfield was innocent, nothing would come of what you'd done. But if he was guilty, he would pay for his crimes dearly. I found out the name of the man I suspected. William Shamsfield. And then I wrote him this little note. I have information regarding the death of Duncan Ross. Come to the Slug and Salad on Briar Road at 5 p.m. on the 17th. Don't tell anybody else about this letter or the meeting. This is a matter of utmost importance. If he'd done it, I knew that would worry him enough so he'd be sure to go. So I waited to see if it worked. And of course, Mr. Shamsi had followed the instructions to the letter. I worked out where the gas pipe was straight away. So I smeared a good amount of the poison I'd bought all around the mouth of the pipe. All the time praying that the devil's work wouldn't be done. It was all just some wild fantasy. 
Wouldn't she have accidentally possibly killed a gas worker doing this? If Shamsir was innocent, she would have just killed a random innocent worker. She know. All the time praying that the devil's work would be done. And the culprit would get his just desserts. Well, congrats, you're all equally terrible people, I suppose. Three days ago, when you were first stood in the dock before me, this whole affair seemed relatively straightforward. Yes, my lord. I certainly never imagined the depths of depravity that we should subsequently find lurking behind the scenes. It has been a long road, my Nipponese friend. It, yes. And one I certainly didn't envisage walking with you. Nevertheless, together we have reached the light at the end of the tunnel, as it were. Miss Green. Yes, my lord. You will henceforth be stripped of your freedom, as punishment for the attempted murder of Mr. William Shamspear. Yes, I know. And you, Mr. Shamspear, you will be tried for the murder of Mr. Duncan Ross in cold blood, and the subsequent attempted murder of Mr. Sosaki Notsume here present. Yeah. Um, Mr. Navajodo? Uh, yes. Yesterday, at the hospital, when you and your friends stopped me from... from ending your life by drinking what was left in the prison bottle. I... I wasn't myself. Can't even really remember what was going through my mind. To be or not to be, I suppose. That's a question that's so hard to answer, it seems. Well, personally, I'm glad of your being here, Miss Green. Oh. And I'd like to believe that it's a blessing Mr. Shamsphere didn't die when he ingested the poison. For your sake, at the very least. Because of you. I chose life, not death. And now you've made the truth come out at last. Really, I can't thank you enough. Oh, Miss Green. Mr. Sosaki Natsume. Y yes, my lord. The court declares that you are exonerated from all blame in this matter. Accordingly, I would call upon the ladies and gentlemen of the jury to present a verdict of not guilty. We're in full agreement, my lord. In that case, I hear that I declare the defendant. Not guilty. Yay. Excuse me. Court is adjourned. We still don't know why uh, Naruhoto can't practice law anymore, though. That that hasn't been answered yet. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, at last, divine justice duly done. Divine justice. My dear fellow, if there were any divine justice in this world, you would shave that moustache. No! This... This has nothing to do with my moustache! Some say that a luxuriant moustache is a sign of physical prowess, Mr. Sholmes. Locum student Mr. Naruhodo Esquire! Once again, once again, you saved me from doom! I'm very happy to have been able to help, Mr. Natsume. Congratulations on your acquittal. Your second in almost as many days. I was first acquainted with and gained affection for English literature whilst in our great homeland empire. And then, by a twist of fate, I was brought to the land that bore the fruit of that literature. 
Only the city of bricks and mortar became my prison. Try as I might, I never found my feet here. In the end, I confined myself to my room and lived life through friendly old books. You've had such a difficult time, haven't you? Ah, but a week ago now, I dragged you out of that dark and dingy room of yours, did I not? You did, you did. I've seen more of life in this week than in all my years to date. And for the first time, I really began to see the true face of the English that so far been hiding from me behind the wall of fog. My dear fellow, there's nothing special about the true face of the English, as you put it. Wheresoever one goes in the world, humans are human. There are few genuine differences. Yes, I, I think you're right. I finally started to see that, and I've come to understand something. I've worked out why I was attracted to English literature in the first place. It made me see that whatever our nationality, we humans all have the same hopes and fears. We're all just doing our best to live. Well said. I to feel the same way. I've made a decision too. I'm going to cut short my study here and return to Japan. What? Just when we become friends here in England? What a terrible shame. Oh, I know. That does tug at my heartstrings. It, it really does. But I've decided I'd like to take everything I've learnt here in Britain and write something of my own. A novel of sorts, I suppose. Oh my. So you'll be creating your own literature, Mr. Natsume. How wonderful. Oh, well, no, I mean... I wouldn't presume to call it literature. Why not? When that is precisely the definition, Mr. Massage. I suppose you're right, yes. It, it will, in a way, be literature. But as of now, all I know is that I like to try my hand at writing. I have no delusions of grandeur. I for one would love to read your work. Well, all things considered, it may, for, may be for the best. After all, you once again emerged victorious. From a battle with the Reaper. Mm. That's very true. And there is no salvation for a person in the dock when the Reaper is the prosecutor. The desire to return post-haste to the perceived safety of your homeland is one I quite understand. My goodness, yes. Faced with such a terrifying prospect. Nobody would consider that cowardly, I'm sure. Quite sure. What Holmes just said makes me wonder if like all the stuff that we've been alluding to the entire time with Mikotobo and everything else and the reason that Sholmes was over like on that Russian boat in the first place has none that feels connected. But, but that's, that's not why I'm leaving. I mean it. And then he shouts, OBJECTION! <laughs> and that was the case that we found ourselves in Broaden six months ago now. So san did indeed return to Japan, and submitted a report about both cases to the government. It was on reading that report that Professor Mikotobo was prompted to visit the scholar. And barely any time later, susaro san was given the news that she must return to Japan as well, on the back of a telegram, stating falsely that her father had fallen gravely ill. The only possible explanation that comes to mind is what happened after the trial on the following day. The day that we uncovered the loot hidden by the now deceased convict in his former lodgings. I had a feeling it had to do with Solon. What is this loot exactly? Oh, well done, Mr. Shums. How simply marvelous of you. To uncover the secret hiding place in just one day. Wasn't it supposed to take 30 minutes? As I believe I told you, my dear fellows, skin prints are extremely useful in such situations. Wouldn't you agree, Gregson? Greg's even happily munching in agreement this whole time, you know, Hurley. Happily? I think perhaps humorlessly might be closer to the truth. So... Transpires the man's fashion to hiding place in the ceiling. And what's in it? What actually is the loot? Let us look then, if you're ready. Let's examine the late bowler's hall. What the? 
What is that? It looks to be some sort of neck band or collar. Is that a bee? Is this like something from the Hound of the Baskerville type deal or something? It's also bloody. A collar? It's huge though. And look at all the gemstones set in it. I can see why it was claimed to be worth a thousand pounds. Perhaps I can have it as a belt. Oh, have you noticed on the inside there? There are some dark stains. You, you don't think they could be blood, do you? I mean, there's quite a lot of it. On second thought, perhaps I won't have it as a belt. Then of course, there's this emblem here. A large letter B and a small crown. What does it signify, do you think? Oh, I hadn't noticed that. Hmm. I feel as though I've seen that emblem somewhere before. You know, where could it have been? That's enough of that, I think. What? What's the matter with Miss, Mr. Shams? All the color has drained from its face. Well, Inspector, I believe you ought to be taking this, aren't you? It will be valuable evidence, after all. It must be kept safely under lock and key. Ah, uh, yes. Get your grubby hands off that, you lot, and hand it over now. I've never seen a collar that large before. And all those jewels certainly look to be extremely valuable. But that's not what stood out the most to me. At least, not once I noticed it. Those dark marks on the inside of the collar. Those stains. Could they really have been blood? Well, that was a funny case, wasn't it? But it's all buttoned up now. And you look very pleased, Iris. Oh, I am. Because I was starting to wonder what I could use as the basis of this month's story in the magazine. But this case would be perfect. It's been so fascinating. You're talking about the latest installment of the Adventures of Herlock Sholmes, I presume. The mystery of the knife in the mist. And the moustached man and the convict's curse, perhaps. I can make it a two-part story. Oh, I can't wait. Um, a word, please, Iris. Y yes, what is it, Hurley? I'm sorry, but you can't write about this case. It's out of the question. What? Huh. Why not? It's a great case. And I shall have to insist that you limit yourself to the first of your two titles. The second must never be written. Is that clear? Yes. Hmm. And so it was that the second of Soseki-san's cases became buried in obscurity. Now, looking back, I feel I understand. And I can see why Mr. Sholmes forbade Iris from publishing the story. I can't. It would take a little longer before I saw the link between everything that had happened and would happen. For it wasn't until two months after the arrival of Susato-san's letter that events began to unfurl again, with an incident that took place at the very heart of the eagerly awaited Great Exhibition of London. And all right, very nice, very good. The key of knowledge is the achievement name that it just gave me. The return of the great departed soul. Fascinating. All right, well, I will do that next time. <sighs> But there we go, another another case solved. And that one, that, one, that one was a good time. I like how everything is so interconnected. And it was very interesting. I, I, I didn't expect... I, I didn't expect Green to be part murderer, I suppose. Or at least attempted murderer. But she definitely didn't think it through very well, did she? Still. And Shamsu was a lot of fun. But I guess they all get to die now, so there's that. Well, I mean, Green is going to prison, I suppose, is what they implied. But Shamsphere gets to be hung, so 
there's that. Anywho, I'm gonna go now and uh, sleep, I guess. It's 10.37. I, I went to bed pretty early yesterday, actually. Like, I went to bed a little bit after 10. Yeah, like a little bit after 10. I think I stopped streaming around 9.30 or something. Um, and woke up again at midnight. <laughs> then went back to bed and woke up at 5. So I keep having not great sleeping times. So I'm trying to figure out how to fix that. But we'll, we'll see. Anyway, as I said earlier at the start of the stream, tomorrow um, I am, might possibly have plans with some friends to go to a board game cafe thingy. But, but my friend can't like start until seven or something like that. So there's a good chance that I won't stream at the usual time, but I probably will attempt to stream at some point if we're not too, out too late. Alternatively, if I get my friends to agree that yes, we will stream at seven, then maybe I'll stream earlier, like for an hour or something like that, just play something random for, uh, for fun. But uh, yeah, that's, that's all I got going on there. And then Friday, I intend to play Splatoon for the first time in a while because it will be the Splatfest. So some multiplayer fun goodness will be there and I hope to see people um, maybe come by and, and play with me. And that's it. That's uh, That's everything. So take it easy. Have a good one. And I'll uh, catch you tomorrow probably. So bye for now.